All right. Uh, yeah, so we have uh, these new co incoming grinders, right? And then uh, Swifty is our most experienced for the face-to-face. -face. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have Josh, who I think... I'm trying to get all these new names straight. Um, we have... No, Matt Welch is Trash Boat Online. He comes from the Columbia, Columbus VRD and uh, Columbus, Ohio. He drove in from Ohio oh. and uh, that uh, he's done quite well in those and he is uh, and he is here. Okay. Is that one of the first Ohioans we've had? Uh, as far as I know, unless we have someone that was like born there and uh, uh, you know, just comes Came in, in later. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Moved around here, but uh, it's the first uh, Im import from Ohio we've had, you know. Yep. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> We talked about this pre-show. I'm excited to see what, if any, cards people pull out from Lost Caverns of Ixalan or Lost Caverns Commander. There's uh, a handful of cards that look like they could make a splash in various strategies across VRD. So it'll be interesting to see if anybody wants to move in on Reanimator, which is a deck we haven't seen in a while. Yeah, no, I, I definitely have some good stuff there. Uh, some interesting things. Uh, with Kevin Freeman in the fold, uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see something like the Red God, uh, but he goes off, you know, in his own, does his own thing quite a bit. Uh, sometimes, you know, to uh, in interesting uh, ways, but, uh, you know, points out interesting interactions, interesting thoughts, so yeah, that, that could be a definite possibility there. Um, oh, Ozier, or Azure. Yeah, like the triple damage, triple damage yep. Azure, or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah, basically, if you deal extra damage, then you deal damage equal to its power. <laughs> All right, looks like we are rolling, and our first picks are predictable. So for the... Uh, oh, and nice. Varner grumps on the crypt uh, and does what uh, has been the trend lately, that crypt's not really getting past that third spot of late. These are going fast. So we've got Time Walk out of Matt. Um, he often ends up in Naya online, so that's kind of an interesting move away. Kevin with the ruby is not surprising. He loves his we red. Pearl into emerald. Just take the two free ones. Yeah, this would be interesting. I, I'm guessing pearl emerald here. If this was or, some, oh, oh good. If this was someone like Swifty or me, you would. I think you could end up with like pearl and like a, a good card, right? Like an yep. attack. Oh, Pearl Twister. So here we go. We do end up That's with that. So. so we still have Emerald and Soul Ring available. Yeah, Soul Ring floating. Nice. Yeah. Um, I'm surprised you take Twister and two, unless unless you want to show now that you're going to be on wheels. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's a flex. Uh, it's a power card. Um, Patrick's done a few of these, but they've been more, a little more casual ones. So yeah. we'll see. Like, not taking Emerald and taking Twister, if you want to play Wheels, is interesting as well, because Pearl doesn't play into that strategy, but Emerald allow, at least allows you to cast Sail into the West. So Swifty told me earlier he's going to take a book out of my page and probably take White Plume second round. All right. Uh, and this is where I normally do it, in the 6th, 7th pick. I'll just grab it. So we got a late is Emerald. Is uh, White Plume's a 3 mana? Yeah, it's a 3 mana. Yeah. It's, it's... And then Season Dungeoneer's 4, and then... Yeah. Yeah, you I've, go red. It depends. You, you can go whatever you want. Like it, you know, it, the color combinations are so. Uh, all right. Yep. Well, Matt. I know Matt was worried he was going to fall back into his normal Naya mold, and Time Walk Force of Will says I'm not doing that. <laughs> nope. Adam picks up Time Vault to go with Crypt, so we'll probably see a key at some point. Yeah. Or any amount of. I mean, keys. you can get those keys at any point at this point. Yeah, yeah and yeah. there are creatures that are keys. So like it's not yeah. too too difficult. This is yeah. a format where. A creature might live a little longer than you would expect it to. Yeah. So I, something like um, Cure's Follower works. Trying to find my... Or Fate Stitcher. Yeah, there's a million keys at this point. Yep. Um, where is... Alex taking Lotus into Raghavan is interesting. I wonder if if Alex is just going to stay really low to the ground. He likes... Uh, he went 4-3 and three with a Naya kind of Lanzi initiative list recently. Oh, the strip mine there, so... Uh, Fast bomb still open. This he did well with a list similar, but with Lotus powering that stuff out, that seems good. That's yep. saga. Ooh, that's a nice saga. Um, yes. I um, I don't love Mana Drain anymore. I don't know. I find Mana Drain underperforms in the format. Unless you're in the heavy heavy artifact deck, I find it's just counterspell most of the time. That's kind of what it says to me as well. 
because the thing about mana drain that's interesting in this format is that if you're in the heavy blue list, when I I don't want the free mana because I'm going to be passing the turn anyway. All right, so we've got demonic uh, time walk force will demonic. I'm going to put him most likely going to go with the Thassa's Oracle list there. Um, oh, I like I like what Swifty's got here so far. That's powerful. Yep. So uh, we have Tinker taken there. I could see Tinker that might have been a card. Tinker with the double mox is nice. And oh, for uh, sure. And I wonder he, if Dan kind of maligns not taking Tinker earlier. Like, if you want to play Drain, Tinker's a nice thing to do with that mana afterwards. Yeah. Uh, if I'm Josh, I take Oko on the comeback here. You've got Emerald and Sapphire and Oko. To do it, yeah. And Oko Tinker is amazing because you can yep. make a food to Tinker away. Um, I, am... I wonder if Kevin is actually making his picks staring at Patrick. <laughs> So well, we talked about this before the draft. Patrick won the seeding lottery and takes eight. Yeah, Kevin it's... comes in second and takes seven. And I said, if I'm drafting and it's me and my co-host on the podcast, Jason Thurston, if he takes eight, I'm going to take seven. I'm just going to stare at him the entire draft. Right. So, yeah, for those of you know, that we, we do these seats in a lottery and the person that got the first seat pick that could have taken seat one or two picked eight. And then Kevin had the second seat pick and could have taken one or two and took seven. Um, so that uh, threw everything for a bit of a loop here uh, quite a bit. I am yeah. looking for the... Oh, you're right, Wandering. Like, it was weird to see Kevin with the second pick the take the Let's seventh seat, which is why I thought it was a petty pick because, I, like I said before the cast, it's me. If I'm drafting oh, against my friend me. Jason, I'm going to be a petty bitch, and I'm going to take of, seven and cut him the entire draft. <laughs> All right. I have uh, generally always had someone in the room running the tech for me, and I just talk pretty, but <laughs> I'm learning how to actually do the tech now, but uh, occasionally. It, it, it's fine, Steven. You can admit that you didn't take the tech module inside Judge Academy. No, not, not this tech module. And I'm not even quite, I'm not even quite sure I'm doing anything anymore. I, I, I might be, uh, I, I'm halfway between, I'm going to move up, move up from L2 to L3 under Foundry to I'm just not going to do Foundry, and I'm going to... Uh, just work my local events that don't care. And, yeah, uh, that, that's what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, Bolted, I believe that's what happened, was Patrick won the seeding lottery and took seven, uh, took eight. Eight, yeah. And then Kevin had second pick and took seven. Um, the dip I don't know why you would... Well, I mean, the difference between seat two and seat one, I uh, I don't know why you would pick it over. If, if one's available, I don't know why you would pick two. All right, so we've got Mox Twister One Ring. Um So One Ring's definitely powerful. It fits in there. That Bowmasters is probably a little early. So Bowmasters had an interesting trajectory. Uh, mm -hmm. Like when it first came out and it was making all the waves, people, include myself included, uh, picked it in the second round, right? It was just like, let's take this quick. Let's see how powerful it is. It's so ridiculous in the other formats. But as it settled down, it's fallen to around the eighth pick. Um, people realized it's not as great here as it is in Legacy and other places. So That's that's why I thought Kevin made that pick staring at Patrick. Right. Um I'd like to see. I wonder if Patrick, like nobody's taken fast bond yet. It doesn't seem like anybody's could lean into fast bond a lot. So I wonder if that's on Patrick's nah, radar. I and you do see, wheels and fast bond. I don't think it's gonna be on Patrick's radar there. I think uh, fast bond might, could go to uh, to Redbeard Alex on the way back okay. here pretty easily. Um, do we know is Patrick a, a vintage cuber? No, he's done. Okay. I don't really. As I said, he's one of the less experienced. He's done a lot of reanimator when he's done the more casual VRDs. Okay. All right. Uh, Kevin loves the bolt. You know, a bolt can fall in here sometimes. I think it's a little early. I th probably picked it here a couple times. Ooh, the diamond. I love this diamond pick. I love this diamond pick. Here's why. You you take Bolt because Alex took Ragavan second pick. Like, now yeah. somebody's going to try and stake their claim <laughs> on the good red spells, and somebody's going to stake their claim on the good red creatures, and I think that's fine. There's Oko, like you yeah, said. Yeah, so the Diamond is a phenomenal card with White Plume Adventurer and with Initiative, because the first yep. Initiative allows you to get the land to replace the land you just pitched. Mm -hmm. So, and it also allows him to keep a splash open into a third color pretty easy. Wow. So so there's the Thor there's the Thoracle like I called. So yep. Thoracle is interesting. So Thoracle like 
such an interesting card in this format, right? When like we had so many drafts where Thoracle went undrafted, and then it was fringy, and then it finally people found the groove of how to build it, but people were still floating it, and because you could. But yes. lately, so many people with Thoracle and Breach have just been like, I'm not floating this anymore. I'm going to grab this where it should be grabbed by its power level, right? Like, it's powerful enough to be here. But because, because it's such a niche card, it would yeah. frequently get floated much later. But people started to realize the risk of that. And people are starting to be like, no, no, no. I'm just, I'm going to take my Breach. I'm going to take my Thoracle. And, like, I'm not risking that. And, you know, and Matt, and Matt does that here. And I think he's 100% right. I like how aggressive Matt and Adam are with their picks and how clear they are with what they're trying to do yeah. with their picks. Like, Adam's just going to play a lot, like, he's going to be pulling a lot of levers. Oh, basically. here's the main spoof. God, I, 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 some of these people are drafting strong here right now. I mean, I'm, yeah. like, I'm going to switch to text here for a second just so we can get a look. Like, this, you know, the thing about Alex here is he doesn't need fast bond and no one else is going to grab it right now other than maybe Patrick if he wants the third color. Well, that, that's why I asked about Patrick's draft, because if you've been watching LSV's Vintage Keep drafts, mm -hmm. Draw 7s and Fast Bond, yeah. that's something he loves, and Reed Duke as well has been playing that recently, so if that's the content you're ingesting, that's a theme you're going right. to see. But like Lotus Minsk and Boo gives you the chance for a turn turn one uh, Minsk and Boo, right? Uh, so, uh, he takes Minsk and Boo, has Strip Mine and Raghavan, and if Dan isn't thinking about taking W6 just to stop the shenanigans, we're going to run exactly into what happened with Mason a couple drafts ago, which is just you hand him everything, and he's going to blow up everybody's mana base all day. Yeah, now Dan's not going to do that there. I don't like the Fury there, necessarily. I think you can wait on the Fury. Um, Fury's really strong, but I think that um, there's just better you can take there. Ooh, two... That's a good tomb there. A little later than where it has been, and I, pro I Swifty's probably cursing that right there. I think Swifty wants that tomb this round. There's yeah. The, okay. There's the fast. There's bond. the fast bond. Okay. I think yeah. Alex might have taken it again. I think he and Kevin are fighting yeah. for the good red spells. Yeah. Uh, that's a good spell, Pierce. There, I like that. Mm -hmm. Furry would also be a good card there. Um, you know, <laughs> a good fairy to go yeah. with the Minskin boo. Oh, Swifty takes the Karn there. Nice. All right. Uh, so that's going to be main deckable. Are we? What I, do you think this deck is going to turn into? This deck I, is going to be. I can tell you what this deck is going to be. He's drafted. Okay. He won online once with a red, white, black control list that was mo had the Karn and was, oh, a, okay. was a lot of removal. Um, but he's going to do that. This is going to be a list very similar to what I've run recently. He's going to have that kind of mid rangey uh, red or uh, black white, maybe a splash of red, uh, mm -hmm. mid rangey initiative control where you're just going to try to get the initiative and then keep it or power okay. out the initiative. And as I said, I guessing he probably would have taken the tomb this pick if it hadn't gone to to Varner. Yeah. So so without the tomb, we'll we'll probably see a float on lattice, but will we see? Uh, liquid metal coating and stuff to just gat lands maybe i mean he'll get lattice at some point obviously uh if he takes a liquid metal i don't know it's funny like i i don't i don't think so well maybe for the okay. board uh all right so solitude so layla uh queen of the red three drops there though that's a very mm -hmm. competitive spot and there's a new one we talked about it uh in our pre-game talk uh broadside bombardiers is another amazing red aggressive card that competes in that red red and two spot right yep it's really good in that spot oh uh, she's also one of the best uh clapton songs right and cream <laughs> did he do it in both i'm never not gonna make that joke man it is all right so i'm curious where patrick goes with his twister into solitude maybe mm -hmm. like I, I don't mean, want Twister to be relegated but it might be i mean Twister can just be value but it, it's weird because like I know people do Twister as a value. I don't like Twister as a value because it also refills my opponent's hand, right? Yep. Um, oh, true, early true name at this point. True name's... I mean, it's still good, and it will we're still... Flex it we're will flexing into aggro. Like right. Yeah, I don't know what we're doing here. So true name's good. It will still win you so many games just by, by, by happenstance, but it's just not what it used to be, right? So we lost... If we're Patrick, we lost Hull Breacher, which is a way to shut off the, the, the uh, parallel draw on Twister, our, and we're taking our true name. First duel is Badlands. Badlands, yep. Not even a fetch yet, just the Badlands. 
And Swifty says, no, let's 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 get a real land. Yeah. <laughs> like, you mentioned it's an early true name. We have Twister. We lost Hull Breacher. Wouldn't Narset make a little more sense in that spot? Yeah, I think there's a couple cards that would have been good. Been good yeah. There. So, I don't know. Maybe he took the Twister, and then he lost the um, Bowmaster, and he got scared. Uh, yeah. So there goes the Narset. I like that pick from Josh. It's I think it's... Um, it's a strong pick in the middle of a land run. It shows a lot of restraint. Let people pick some of the lands you don't need around you and stick to taking some of the cards that should have been picked higher. Yeah, but with Fast Bond, I think that's probably a mistake. I think Narset can go if you want another round or so. I think you're going to want a land, some fetch there with Fast Bond, but we'll see. That's interesting. Right now, you're only showing Simic. So right. if nobody... So you have a number of blue duels and blue fetches around you. Yeah. So we've got the swords. Uh, and yeah, Solitude was a second white card taken after White Plume Adventure. And that's, you know... To answer chat. Um, Alright, so we get the Teferi there. So we're going to have some okay. white, white at least over so, there. So Dan is on white. I wasn't sure where Dan was going to end up. If it was going to be a white splash or a red splash, we've, we'd already lost Bolt if we're I, Dan. I know Dan had mentioned to Thirsty in a chat that he planned on trying to just do kind of some counter spells early and stay a little open and see where he could go. Okay. Um, so, you know, white seems pretty good here. We've got sword. I mean, everyone's, lots of people got a little white, right? Right now, oh, there's a, right now there's a little great. white here, a little white there, right? We've got yeah. swords. No, this is great. You still have really powerful cards in front of you that a lot of people might not be interested in taking. Um, I think Lavinia might be underplayed, the two-drop Lavinia. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, That's good. So you have that in front of you. You have, uh, is it Tishana's Tidebinder? Uh, a mono-blue card that just came out in Lost Caverns that counters an activated ability and then just shuts something off for as long as you have Tidebinder. Like, there's some really good cards we can put in here. There we go. I fixed the, I fixed the Artificer. Uh, all right, so we got Bloodstained Mire. Uh, solid preordain coming out of Dan over there. Uh, Spell Pierce, he already did that. Yeah, Josh, not really. Sp Pierce was taken. Yeah. We could take Arcane Denial. We could take Dispel. We could take uh, Force Spike if we want to be petty. Or we could just start taking lands, like you suggested. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, he's going to want some lands there. Mm hmm. Yeah, so if he's going to shore, shore up the mana base, so so in the in that deck that you described, are we are we like playing dead guy Al with like vindicates and stuff, or I, I think it can go in a variety of ways. I mean, it feels a little, it can be that way, uh, or um, you know, it, I can't remember the last time he had, did it, but I mean, he had, I mean, he had solitude then. Obviously, he's lost that, but. Uh, yep. I mean, there's just so much good removal in that trio of colors. Um, now, whether he ends up in the red or not, we will see. But uh, yeah, all oh, we've we've lost Bolt, Lelia, and Ragavan from the and Fury from the red side of things. There's still yeah. a lot that's open. Chain Lightning is still a very good card. Price of Progress is going to be a really good card. Fire Blast if he can hit enough mountains. Yeah, he's not gonna. No, we're not gonna see that. I don't think that Fire Blast we probably could see out of Freeman. He likes he mm. likes Fire Blast. Um, mm. All right, so we had a massive run there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So two fetches still open, I guess, officially. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, we got two fetches left. Yeah, because the Vista was ninth. I counted it as the ninth. So what do we got? We have... Windswept Teeth. Yeah. And... Verdant. Verdant, okay. <laughs> two green fetches that'll that could just go to Swifty pretty easily in a round or two. Yeah, or Alex or somebody, you know. Yeah. Off color fetches at some point. Patrick is now fighting Dan. Yeah, is that Azor blue? So we've got let's switch back over to Jack you for that. So we've got Pearl Twister, Wondering Ponder Saw. So kind of going with a blue white control looking shell. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, do the true name, try to protect it. One ring gonna draw you some cards. I mean, it, it's not a bad shell overall. We're just kind of infighting now against Dan for some of the more powerful options. And when that happens, both decks are gonna get watered down a bit. All right. So Kevin, so what this picks here tell me for Kevin, and then knowing Kevin as a drafter is that he is going to draft a lot of 
weird cards that no one else wants. So he's pretty free to take hate picks and to just take take lands for a little bit. Okay. Because because traditionally what happens is a lot of his picks are just not um, not on anyone else's radar. <laughs> okay. So between Kevin and Swifty, where do we think Fable is going to land? Is it going to be more powerful in one of those decks versus the other? Uh, Mirror Breaker. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I think I. I, mean, I don't think it'll be necessarily more powerful in either. Uh, I no, actually no, hundred percent. It'll be more powerful in Swifty's deck because um, keep reflections of copying a initiative creature is bonkers. So okay, that's um, what I thought. It, I just yeah. figured if if people were going to fight over that card, it would be them. It seems like Alex is a little more in on just being gruel, so we might not see uh, Fable out of that deck. Yeah. But could be wrong. No, reflections copying an initiative creature is uh, is really sick. Also, copying Fury is really good too, since that's in yeah, Alex's wheelhouse. But it just doesn't seem like if there's enough. The thing about copying a Fury is that's super draft dependent, right? Like mm -hmm. if there's enough good targets, uh, if there's enough creature decks. So it really, yeah. and and that's where I I thought his Fury was a little early. Fury's amazing in the right draft. Like Solitudes, there's always one good target, right? Solitudes always amazing, but yes. it feels less good to like play to just off a of fury to get rid of a, a bob right <laughs> you know yeah. and, and lose out on the extra damage and so that was the wheel i mentioned i i would i would have expected ren and six instead of fury in that wheel spot uh, josh is uh not seeing uh what's going on <laughs> Try, nope. our second uh, he tried the spell pierce earlier now he tried the pierce and uh or tried the prismatic this uh he still has all the duels in front of him too but nobody's yeah. really started to make a run on them mm, good misstep there Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the misstep there. Um, I wouldn't be so. So someone's going to grab a get probe in this next round or so, probably. Yeah, yeah. I keep forgetting about that card. Like you can only play one in vintage, so just you automatically yeah. have a fifty-nine card deck, and I just never think about it. Yeah. Um, there's the brainstorm. brainstorm he's, got a, right. he's got two fetches. That seems solid. You know. Yep. Which one you're you also, want is going to depend yeah. on how many fetches you got. So, I would expect Matt might also be interested in Consider. Well, and what Matt doesn't have, which I'm really shocked by, but I don't think anyone else is so solid. I mean, I guess other than Kevin, and he, I don't think he's going to grab it so far, is Vampiric still out there? Which, speaking mm -hmm. of, let's look at our new um, toy. And let's see what's missing, right? Uh, this evidently has not updated, though. Uh, Mark said it's supposed to auto-update. Ooh. Um, but there's a lot of things that are showing as... Um, hey, Mark, if you're hearing this, can you... Show, do I need to refresh this to get this to update? There it literally there. is vamp out of the top yeah. 20 so, cards. Uh, so Monolith just went Chrome Mox. It yeah, updated, Mono finally. Yeah, I... I think Adam's just on autopilot right now. Nobody's getting in his lane. And he's free fine. to take. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing he's missed so far that he probably really wanted is the one ring. Yeah. I th if I had to guess, we'll probably see that Talarian Academy pick come around pretty soon. Yeah. No I don't one, think if I'm Adam, I want to let that go too, too, long, too, too much longer. Yeah. No one else is grabbing that. But all right. So we've got Vamp, Inquisition, Chromox just went, Get Probe, Stoneforge, the two fetches, and then a lot of, a lot of lands coming up as our top current undrafted. Yep. Dan has the opportunity to flex, I think, easier into a Stoneforge deck than Patrick does. Yeah. So there's our Probe. Mm-hmm. And Chromox. And our Mox, yeah. Uh, our Probe and our Days just go. Get our, well, one of our last two fetches, so... So Alex, a a uh, A E Redbeard, as he is mm -hmm. known, um, still looking pretty solid here. The only question I don't love is Fury, but I get it because Kevin and others, he, you know, he's afraid he's going to lose it. it. It's not a bad pick. I just think uh, in this draft so far, I don't love it. Um, it it seems kind of like a scared pick. Yeah, I said I would often pick Fury in the fifth round. I just don't mm -hmm. think right here I'd pick Fury. Duress before I OK is um, interesting. Um, oh, Josh nabs the Talarian Josh Academy. Josh nabs the Academy. Okay. But Varner goes into the second color with the Stoneforge, which mm -hmm. uh, nothing wrong there. There's the I. Okay. <laughs> Swifty says, I see your duress, and I'm going to take the card 
that's probably better. <laughs> yep. No, Duress over there, IOK. There's nothing wrong with Duress. Duress is an amazing card. No, it is. It, that seems like a card that might have just, like, you overlooked IOK or thought it was already taken, which happens a lot yeah. in VRD. Like, yeah. people are very focused on what they're doing and not always running a control <laughs> ref on the sheet to see right. what has and hasn't been taken. And there's a classic Kevin Freeman pick. That pick is the most Kevin Freeman pick of all Kevin Freeman picks ever, outside of probably Lightning Bolt. Um, and that Eidolon is, of the Great Revel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he likes the Punisher cards. He likes the Eidolon. Uh, won't be surprised if he takes... There's the newer Eidolon. Do you know the name of it from... Um, uh, it- from Lost Caverns? Yeah, from Lost Caverns. Uh, no, I do not. Okay, I can't. You went in chat. There's there's a new Eidolon esque card from Lost Caverns. Um, Let's oh. See if I can find it. Yeah, see if I can okay. sure set up. All right, so we got Path there. He's like Swords went. Oh, I'm gonna take Path. Um, yeah, I mean Path. He's in white blue just now, so that's probably better than um, Prismatic ending. Um, I I don't I think I like March a little better than Path just because I don't like giving folks a land. But Path is definitely yeah. Path is definitely clear and easy, right? Like I don't need more mana. I don't need fanciness. I just yeah. And March is X and a single white, correct? Yeah, but you can exile yeah. a card if you need to for the X. Yep. This might also seem sound like be a pick in favor of the fact that there might not be a lot of additional white cards in Patrick's right. deck. Wandering, that is a beautiful question. See, one thing I've realized is that sometimes I don't read a draft. Like, I'm pretty decent at reading drafts and what people are going to do. But sometimes I don't think about that question that you're asking, right? And I pick a shitload of removal. And I have all this powerful removal. And then I look around and there's just not a creature deck for it, right? And that's a skill I'm working on to better my VRDs. Uh, and I think you make a beautiful point there. That um, this is a lot of removal early on. And there's still necessarily not clear that there's going to be a lot of creature decks for that removal to work on. Yep. Um, so I think that path, like like the swords, the solitude, all of that, this is always fine. That path can wait four, five, six picks to see what um, how these decks are shaping out, right? Yep. No. Great question. I do want to know what Adam's going to pick up a Stoneforge Mystic. You have so much big mana, you can cast oh, Cauldra Complete if you wanted yeah, to. Yeah, but... yeah, yeah. He's going to Cauldra Battle Skull. I mean, almost assuredly. I mean, him losing the Academy hurts a bit, but I mean, that's the beauty of that deck is that you can. Now, I will say, with Josh having the Tinker, um, he's going to, like, Josh could easily say, well, you got the Stoneforge, I'm taking the Cauldra. Cauldra is not a bad Tinker target in its own way, right? So there's yeah, the and... And if people want to step on your toes and take some of the other good large Tinker tar- targets, they're just going to do nothing more but dilute their own decks. So Kevin with the Vamps intro. Ke- Kevin with a good read there. I, I, yeah. like, I like that read from Kevin. Um, you know, it's good elsewhere. Um, it may not be amazing. I don't know what he's going to get with it. Like, is he just, you know, gonna? I'm going to grab an answer. Last fetch goes off the board. Um, Swifty with the Prismatic showing he's probably going to grab a third color. You really don't want mm-hmm. that two-color prismatic, but he's got the fetches. He can kind of get what he wants at this point. So, yeah, at this point, none of the triomes are taken, and you have so many in front of you. Is it three or four triomes? Yeah. Three triomes that are red, black, X. Yeah, so. you, don't want, you don't want that many triomes, but uh, a triome. No, no, no. I'm just right. saying, like, flexing into a third color is really easy. You don't even yeah. need additional duels. You just need the one triome. Right? All right. So our fetch train... The room got angry about the Merc Tide, according to Mark. So our eyes in the sky... Uh, our man in the street, as they say, <laughs> Mark Caterberg, says the room got angry over the Merc Tide. So some people wanted some hot Merc Tide action, but Patrick said, no, I'm going uh, to. No. But you know what? There are a bunch of other good cards that play like Merc Tide nowadays. Uh, oh, for t- sure. Tolarian Terror, uh, Shipbreak, uh, whatever. That one's my favorite. Um, but um, Heat Elemental or whatever it is from Wilds of Eldraine. Yeah, yeah. So there's, there's a lot of Merc Tides at home. Yeah. yeah, fail whale, the the big whale. Uh, oh, uh, not Aether Forge. Aether uh, Forger? Yeah. Ethereal Forger? Ethereal, Ethereal Forger. Forger. Yeah. Um, all right. I wonder if Swifty stays low to the ground, if Dreadhorde Arcanist is going to be a look for that deck. So it wouldn't be bad. I mean, he's got the Thoughtseize. He's got, uh, uh, you know, that would definitely wouldn't be bad at all. Esper Sentinel plays so well with the White Plume. Um, if I'm Swifty... 
and I want the second adventure guy, I probably take it coming up because I would not be surprised to see uh, Alex dip into a few of the adventure uh, or the initiative guys. So uh, I think the second white initiative guy is yep. on should be on Swifty's radar. Um, I would think so too. Uh, I think you're the only one that really wants to take that one. Alex has in front of them under. I don't know under. Yeah, well, there, there's that. But I mean, if Alex because he's got the if Alex goes the third color, right? Like. Alex oh, is I'm not even saying that. Alex is showing Gruel, so that gives right. Alex Caves of Chaos Adventurer, the right. red one. And is it Under, under Mountain under, Engineer? Under Mountain Adventurer. Adventurer, the green one. So, yeah. like, just in that lane immediately, there's two adventure right. creatures that cost... The red one's five and the green one's four? No, they're both four. Okay. No, uh, yeah, they're both four. The only one that's five is the blue one, uh, or five or six. All right. they're, they're pretty much all four except for the three-man one and then the, the blue one. Got it. So, Steven, question from chat. Who do you think is most likely to pivot into green-blue merfolk? Uh, none of the above. All right. Not, 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 not going to happen here. You, Mason, you are the most likely to pivot into green-blue merfolk uh, at home while you, while you do this. Uh, light green... Oh. Arcane... Yeah. What is Arcane Savant? Can we now, bring that up for the people at home? So, Arcane Savant doesn't work in the way... So, we had a point where Arcane Savant was probably the most broken card in the format, right? Um, Arcane Savant still technically works, but the combo that it used to do doesn't work. So before you shuffle your deck, start the game, you reveal this card from your deck and exile an instant sorcery card you drafted that isn't your deck. When Arcane Savant enters the battlefield, copy a card you exiled with cards named. Arcane Savant, you may cast that copy without paying its mana cost. So what you can do with Arcane Savant um, is do something like Heat Shimmer. Oh, uh, and just blap somebody for the number of artifacts you control? No, no. So you, you cast Arcane Savant, and then you have Heat Shimmer in your board, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then... You know, Savant does not work anymore, so we, we changed the pick. But it used to, we had it work for a little bit. And okay. So basically you would cast that, and you could like cast Heat Shimmer, copying Savant, the casting Heat Shimmer, copying Savant, Copy and Savant, Copy and Savant. Oh, oh, that's Heat Shimmer's the clone. I got yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. And there were other cards with it as well, but um, yep. But okay, yeah. that makes sense. It, it, we, it, we had a draft or two where it worked. It was probably one of the most broken things because there was some crazy stuff you could do with it, right? Like casting Emrakul or casting something that allowed you to cast Emrakul. There was all sorts of craziness that we did with it, and yep. it then we kind of decided against it. So it got goes it. back to not working. Yep. So with the walking ballista pick, Adams basically stamping. That yeah. they're going to take Mishra's factory at some point. I don't think you necessarily need factory or, or, or uh, you don't need workshop. workshop sorry, you don't need workshop for that. I mean, Bliss is just so good. Uh, he's got white. I don't, you don't be surprised to see Azurda, right? Um, okay. Ballista is just like literally one of the most combo enabling cards ever, right? Uh, it's just it's just a wild combo card. You actually think we'd we'd see them uh, or Adam end up with the Heliod combo? Yeah, I mean, Heliod's a, a, a versatile, like, uh, I mean, it is the key piece of, like, a million Agatha's cauldrons, you know, combo, yeah, okay. you know, so. Uh, uh, That'd be interesting to see if Adam ended up in cauldron. Very good deck here. Early Chandra. Chaos of Chaos, I called, called that pretty much. Uh, yep. So, Tundra. So Matt's basically been filling out their Thoracle deck with some defensive pieces. Yeah. Gr with Duress, Grief, and Pierce. Very solid Grief. Yeah. I, the, the real question for me for Matt, um, and let's take a look here. So he takes the C there, is Thoracle, in my opinion, Thoracle is best in the um, uh, the the shell with red, right? The Grixis shell. The Grixis shell. Where, yeah. where you can get... Um, breach um yep. so does he's got this mire so he could definitely and the tarn so yeah he could definitely still do that um yep. but do you want to float it and risk someone taking the value breach so uh volcanic hasn't been taken yet so maybe two more rounds try and get yeah. volcanic try and get breach right that would be my only thing if i was going to float it a little longer all right so we got some top action yep riding with the top down 
So Josh is one of our QB aficionados, and this is looking very, very QB, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, there's the opportunity with Fast Bond Vulcan and Top to move into Mystic Forge, quote unquote, combo still. Yeah, yeah Volk is gone. Dan has Volk. Okay. Dan Volk. has Volk. Yeah. I missed that pick then. Oh, it was just the yeah. yeah. He wheeled it. Yeah, okay, this is on the wheel there. All right, so then yeah, then I would take if I was looking at Breach nice. as Matt. Then I would take Breach in the next rounds. Mind Twist. That's a play. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Pyroblast. That's good Pyroblast. Uh. <laughs> and... Season Dungeoneer. That's your that's your backup pick up for that one. Yeah, which is why I said Swifty. So if 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 Patrick does not take Season here, Swifty will, should definitely nab it. Nope, oh, there we yep. go. There it goes. And I said he should have nabbed it after the, the Prismatic ending. It's where he should have nabbed it at. So. Okay, yeah. And and that's why someone else is going to try to grab it. Dungeoneer yep. is so good. <laughs> like, is Swifty going to move into a, like a little taxing element with and, uh, and Thorns? I mean, it could. Or... That that list can. It's it just it, he's okay. going to look at it and see. I mean, uh, that list also could have. It's a very versatile spot, right? Like you can do the yes. Stoneforge package. You can not do the Stoneforge package. You can do the taxes. You can not do the taxes. Um, yep. You know, he can take more walkers and have like a nice Gideon package. Like, there's just a lot of stuff mm. you can do with that. Um, Right. Man of League. So Kevin's staking claims on both of the Rebs. Uh, I mean, which we again, have one, two. No, no, that's a good. Those are those are great. I like those from yeah. Kevin a lot, right? Yeah, four again, or five blue drafters right now. So yeah, absolutely. Other like he could have floated the idol on later, right? And this is the thing mm -hmm. about Kevin's strategy: whether it works or not, we'll see. But it normally, like the stuff he does. So Kevin once did a draft, a deck that was a little surprising, um, and it did okay. It was a, le a little less competitive of one, but it involved, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him go back into it. He mentioned it as a possibility. Um, he used Heartless Summoning, and so he was in like red, black, with a lot of removal and stuff, and then... Yep. Heartless Summoning, and then, like, Big Dragons, right? So he was cheating out Big Dragons with Heartless Summoning. Oh, okay. Oh, Andrew takes fourth. And also, that signals that and the other thing, that Andrew's Comet is still open, right? So Okay. And we're playing in paper, so we won't crash Moto. Right, right. So Comet's still oh. open. Uh, obviously, should be pick on the comeback here. Okay. So I was going to mention Steam Vents after we said yeah. that Valk was taken, yeah. but I don't think you prioritize Steam Vents over Breach no, if I, Breach is in your list. I don't... I think he has... I think this is right. I don't think Dan's taking Breach, right? And no. I don't think Alex. So his Breach worry is Kevin or Swifty, probably. Um, like, Kevin especially just, like, on the uh, bolt out. Like, I'm just going to... End of the game, I'm just going to bolt you four times. Yep. Um, so I think Steam Vince is right there, and then you just okay. take Breach next because the chance that you could lose Vince to Dan is is high, and he wants that he wants that fetchable uh, duel. Well, you know, it only has one fetchable duel, despite the fact that Hallowed Fountain is still available. Right. Well, I mean, I said uh, Matt wants that fetchable duel there. Nice borrower. That's a beautiful. Yeah, but we're not. So I... good. I just don't think we would lose steam vents to Dan on the wheel back. So I would have yeah. taken breach in the steam vent slot and then tried to wheel vents on the way back. Yeah. Like, I, I guess he did away. I, I think, I, I think I take the vents there, uh, you know, but you might be right. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's see. All right, we want to go Jace again. Oh, Jace, how the mighty fall. We love you, but oh. you not what it used to be. And we've updated. Okay. All right. So Alex has, so Alex picked, I told comment you, while I, you're looking at the he, sheet. Yeah, he was going to... The fourth The fourth just did that. Um, the, the fourth triggered... That's how it happens, right? And I said I would not be... Alex is going to end up with a white somewhere. I figured he was. He's going to end up in Naya. And there's the comment. So, yeah, we still have Savannah and Plateau available to us, I believe. Yeah, that that hurts for Swifty, but it, it's not backbreaking, you know. No. Um, so our top available cards right now, we've got Borrower just went. Lutri's still out there. Veil's still out there. Um, Petal's still out there. Petal, Mystical, Beseju. Uh, I don't, Court of Garenberg's weird. That's that. Is that high on there? It's been picked a lot lately, and I, I don't. The, our, the way our numbers track, that's an anomaly. It's not supposed to be that high. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, LED is a possibility. Wheel. So lots of good yep. stuff out there. Um, Voidwalker. So Voidwalker yeah. and Confidant. 
looking at what's out there and what's available, I wonder if Matt goes for a backup combo win of Helm Voidwalker, or if Matt just kind of lets that float over to Swifty to go into the Orzov. Like, you have Rip, and you have Voidwalker, and you have Leyline, <laughs> and you have Helm and Swifty seat. Yeah, I could see that for sure. Um, I think Helm Voidwalker is interesting. It's... It's a combo that always almost gets picked quite a bit, but then even gets boarded sometimes, and it's just that threat. Did they bring it in? Did they not bring it in? Right? Yeah. Because you can just main deck Voidwalker without the rest of the pieces. It's just exactly. such a good card. Yeah. Man, Adam tanking on this pick. Uh, Trash Boat is Matt Welch. So, yeah, Adam's in the tank here a bit. Um, lots of artifacts. Uh oh. Oh, we got a. We have a dexterity error. That, uh, yeah. There we go. Okay. Sheet is fixed. Yeah, I'm very curious to see what, what this pick is from from Adam. We're still floating all our keys, which I think is fine. Yeah. Um, you mentioned the Zerda pick, and nobody's going to... Oh, all right, never mind. There's Zerda. Just okay. Make sure we get it, right? You mm -hmm. know. So in VRD, what are some of the most common pieces for the Zerda deck that we haven't seen in adam's list do you know those i mean you he, he, he's got the monolith you take the other monolith and then yeah, that's the salt monolith for those that don't know uh looking at his list so he i don't know if he realizes this but urza saga and zerda is a nomba so he has to main deck the zerda um you cannot um companion zerda with urza saga Correct, because it has no activated abilities right. until it triggers. Because other than the, uh, there's a saga right now, he could companion it. So, um, you so you generally want at least a ballista and then a backup ballista, uh, like uh, in the form of like goblin uh, cannon. Um, what is that? There's one I got lost to the other day, and so it was like, what is it? Mine, um, the one that goblin like, mine. No, it's like four mana, you can put a counter on it, then you tap it, and you deal damage to something equal. Tap it and sacrifice it and deal oh, damage. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot, any other piece, you know, because the what's interesting is you're infinite mana -ing and then using Urza. Ballista yep. sucks, because when you cast Urza, it dies. When you cast Ballista off Urza, it dies. So you want, like, the cannon or something that you can cast off Urza and then kill them immediately. Yep. You also have the Oriac Salvagers combo in front of yeah. you if you want. Yeah, it's a good potential. And LED is still out there. Yep. Um, Do you think LED would be a bridge too far for this deck? Um, no. I mean, I don't. It, it's not amazing, but it's not. Yeah, I don't know where LED goes here. I'm surprised by the Fluster Storm. I'm surprised by the Fluster Storm there. I still think that if you want the breach, leaving it out there too much longer is risky. Um, all right, so we're going to call Trash Boat in. Uh, Mark, this is not a Zerda Companion list if he runs Saga main deck. He, he it cannot be. Other than that, so far it could be. But uh, uh, the three interesting Zerda no-goes are uh, Urborg, Yavamaya, and uh, Saga, as they are lands that do not have activated abilities. So Swifty with the Scrubland, because nobody else is going to take it, so why not? Yeah. Pith... Oh, man, that Pithing Needle looks like a sideboard pick. Yeah, but again, if he's taking a bunch of, of stuff that no one else wants, that's solid, right? I mean, he, yep. he's in a... He's in that spot of, like, I can just take hateful things that don't... Others might want, um, and not worry about it because I'm taking Heartless Summoning and a bunch of five drop dragons that no one's ever going to take, right? Yeah, that makes sense. I, good old mentor there. Um, We've already lost the top, so we can't just do... Right, yeah, we lost top, but there's still plenty of just, you know, just straight value. Yeah, I thought with the Merktide we might see, like, a very Xeroxy list from Patrick, and I think me mentor signifies that as we move forward. All right. Oh, Fry um, has to now, be a sideboard card. It is, and now I, on that one, like I was defending the needle. I'm not going to defend the fry, right? Like I, yep. <laughs> my uh, my good grace of defense can only go so far. <laughs> oh. All right, so that's funny. Uh, all right, so Swifty doing the land, short up his land base there. Yep, got the third um, color, like like I thought he was going to. 
Right now, Josh just has a value fast bond, and I'm kind of curious if we're going to start to lean into that and the Narset with any of these wheels that are still available or not. Echo LED is something that Josh could do with that, right? Like L Echo and LED is solid. Um, oh, yeah. Echo of Aeons because we have Narset. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, so solid birds there. That Besage is good. Uh, I Besage was going really, really high for a while. Mm -hmm. I like the card, but I don't love the card in this format. Like, it's almost always good, but most of the time I just want it as a land. Like, if you're going to slot it in, you almost you'd have to slot it in as a spell, not as a yeah. land. Because, like, I've had a lot of games where, like, when I draw it late, I love it. But when I draw it early, I'm like, fuck, I want this late. I don't want this now. <laughs> well, I don't... We had... We had the questions in chat about prioritizing creature removal, and I think this is another contextual pick. Do we want Besage you early? Good oof there. That's based good. on the context of the draft, right. or do we but, want it late? No, I mean, 14, that's a good spot for Besage you. Like, it was going, like, 5, 6, 7 for a little while. <laughs> um, like, let's pull it up and see where it... Um, like, I like 14 for Besage you. I'm just saying I find the card to be... Um, I don't think that's a bad pick at all there. No, not at all. I think it's pretty good in, in the spot that it's in. Um, all right, let's look at... Alex with the Collector Roof. This is just a yeah. good card overall, like another... Yeah, I like this that. This could be really. a main deck card if he needs it to be. Yeah, for sure. All right, so Beseju has gone as low as 20, as high as 5. Wow, okay. So... Discord 11 went 5. But, you know, lots of 11s, 15s, 13s. But for a while there, like 15, 16, 17, like there was a 7 online. It was like a 7, and then a 13, and then a 7, uh, and then a 6. So for a while there, it was fine in that like 5, 6, 7 range pretty solidly. Um, okay. But I think this is a correction to where. Yeah, um, to where it should be. Yeah. Where does Odawara go? Uh, it sh falls shortly after. I wouldn't be surprised okay. if it goes in the next three rounds here. Uh, okay. You know, it's so versatile. Um, so yeah, that would... See. I mean, yeah, it goes a little later. Like, it, it looks like st starts around round 12 occasionally and then goes as late into the 20s. Uh, Lois was like a 34. Or Lois was a 40, but that was a St. Louis Presents. Uh, so, but, you know, cons very rarely lower than 30. Makes sense. Uh, Remanded Miscalc, we're just going to say, hey, we're going to get some counter spells up here. Uh, there's yeah, the Retrofitter. Just... There's the another uh, of the classic, you know, just super value. Go with the Urza. And there's the Breach. Okay. I was like, right before, we right before the break. Yeah, Matt's like, yep. all right, not going to let this thing go past the break. We're two rounds, one more pick before the break. Josh Got with the again. Wasteland, solid there. Yeah, you have the fast bond. Alex has W6, so you can't let the Wasteland really float too much longer. Yeah, I mean, I think Alex would be rough with three and both Wasteland and Strip, but, you know, it's still, like... And no fast bond. Right. You just want the value. I mean... Yep. I wonder uh, if Josh will pick uh, pick Crucible with fast bond. Or if uh, Rhyming Up Excavator is more in line with what they're trying to do. Yeah, I think in his list... Uh, well, he's got the Academy, so I think I go Crucible in that list. I, yeah. Uh, if you want one, um, I was like, otherwise, I think you want the Ramen up. But there's a decent amount of removal out there, and he's got the Academy in the top, so I think if you mm -hmm. want it, you go Crucible. Yep. Okay. The, like Josh's list is still kind of wide open too, which is really interesting to see. Like he hasn't really coalesced on a theme yeah. besides disruption. I think. See, to me, Josh's list needs a third color. So I've drafted green. Oh, okay. I've drafted this similar list to him a lot, like this green blue Academy shell. And one of the problems is outside of a few counter spells, which he doesn't really have yet. Um, yep. he, you can't, you're doing your thing. You can't stop their thing ever. Like green blue yep. just does outside of his Oko green blue just doesn't have the way to stop their thing consistently. So I would really like to see him have black, um, and go with a, um, what is the green, black, blue uh, band commander guy? Yep. Okay. Um, and then like a little bit like Assassin's Trophy and like his list to me really starts to hum with a black splash that should come and Assassin's Trophy and Terra Sunder and Leovold and stuff like that. Because right, okay. 
right now. Oh, Swifty's in the St. Louis. He's gonna do the uh-huh. thing that St. Louis people do. He's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna declare, and Mason's crying somewhere, and uh, Swifty's going all St. Louis on us. Solid braid there. I love that braid from Kevin. That's a very yep. solid pick. A nice flexible card. Yeah. Ooh, nice reprieve. That's I like that one too. That would have been good I, in Swifty's deck. I mean, like if Dan takes remand, you can take remand at home. Yeah. I wonder if we'll get a Brotherhood's End out of Kevin. Yeah, I mean, flexible card. You can easily either Swift or Kevin. Like either could do that. Um, card's good. Brotherhood's End. It yeah. gets. So, what do you actually think about Dovin Hand of Control? Because that's fallen out over the last like two or three drafts. No, I think... it's, it's. I love the card. Like I, I'm not. Uh, I'm not all about it as much as say you know Brandon. But uh, the card is just really ooh, vile. Interesting. Um, so Dovin is just like it is of such a good, good tax. It only affects them. Um, it's really hard to win through when you're like Matt's deck, right? Because it's artifact, yep. instant, and sorcery, and then it just has these random upside of slowing the aggro list or stopping something like the Tinker Bl- Blightsteel. Like like your Blightsteel cannot hit me. Um, yep. Okay. So I love the card. I think it's really good. Um, uh, he's trying to get fancy over there. You don't. We don't got to get fancy on the petty theft. Brazen. Yeah, no. the, the sheet does it with just brazen borrower. Um, <clears throat> no need to get fancy. All right. So we got Sorcerer Spy Guys. Probably a little early, but you know, yeah, Swifty's good. He's got a plan. Um, yeah. I, it it helps <laughs> slow the game down or quagmire your opponent a bit if you want yeah. uh, on the Mardu list. Yeah, I mean, I like Spyglass. I think it's good in his list. I just don't think it needs to go there. Jo- Josh has been the king of uh, the... That's three three for Josh today. Yep. <laughs> I mean, it does give us an idea of what Josh is trying to do with these picks, though. Yeah. All right. I think I got... Uh... So it seems like the consensus for Josh then is to flex into black for Leovold. Lean a little more maybe into the draw sevens and see where we can go and control the opponent. All right. Matt takes an offer you can't refuse. Just that's, an that's, easy, cheap counter spell. It's really good in that Thoracle list. Like, especially because mm-hmm. you can counter your own thing and just get more mana. Yep. Um, we saw, we see balance into Vala Summer into Archmage's Charm. Like the Adam, Alex, and Dan just had these picks ready to go. Yeah. All right. Um, so I think we've got an interview coming in. Um, and Mark, if you are listening, the crowd has spoken, and we want Mr. Welch to come in. Uh, all right, so uh, looking at these lists, we have uh, yeah, so look, Colts up there, uh, really good veil, Archmage's Charm, probably a little bit early, but uh, you mm-hmm. know, it's definitely not bad uh, at all. Um, let's see what we've got in our. All right, let me chat. I'm going to close you up here for a moment. I'm going to move this over and block up so chat cannot see. And let me switch up our views here. To, oh, yeah, shut down. Oh, yeah. We have pastures. All right. So, Peter, you want to go ahead and take a break real quick, and I'll run this one? Works for me. All right. All right. So, we have Matt Welch, Mr. Trash Boat. Uh, drove in how many hours? From Six hours. Six hours. All right. Came in last night, got him some sushi, set at the hotel. So, uh, what do we think of our draft so far? I am surprised I got this. Okay. Uh, this was my my seat one deck that I had planned. Okay. And I took the force, I decided on the tutor on three, and I'm like, I'm going to stake my claim one for whatever. If I if it goes wrong, I've got a uh, demonic consultation and Tain Impact to go fall back on. Right. But I've gotten like two or three pieces of like counters, uh, uh, what you call that? Counters lands, I got some tutoring, and I plan to get a little bit more later. Okay. I'm floating a few of them. I don't think anybody else is going to take it. 
the red blast kind of sucked in one of one of those. But right, okay. What else have you? Uh, anything that you've particularly missed that you thought uh, you yeah. might like? What 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 uh, what have you missed other than the red blast that you the really vampiric wanted? tutor? The va- yeah, I was surprised yeah. on the vamp. Like after you took the demonic, I was like, okay, well he should do, the vamp should be coming swiftly, and then. Uh, it went a little bit longer, a little bit longer. Yeah, and... I didn't think Kevin would want it. I didn't think he would either. So I was like, okay, I can do duress. Yeah. I'll probably take that before you take vamp, and then I can take vamp on the next go around, and he kind of surprised me. Why duress of Rye? Okay. <sighs> was it really dismissed? Uh, I kind of like the idea of just being able to tag non-creature spells. Okay. For like, not worry about cost, just yeah, exactly. T- take a card, like take... uh, Comet or Chandra, right? Or okay. uh, what's the other one? Minskin right. Boo, like. Those big things that can kind of pressure me late in the game, okay. uh, I kind of like having the ability to snag those and counter spells and stuff. So, All right. uh, were you worried about floating the breach as long as you did? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why I grabbed. I, I again, I didn't think anybody would take it, but, um, but I mean, a value breach is always like, I, like Kevin could you know value breach and just bolts people out, right? Yeah, like, that's, like that was on my mind, and I'm like, I should probably just take that now to make sure that I don't see, get stuck. I started calling the breach for you right after the duress. <laughs> yeah, and then I called it. So we debated whether you should have taken it steam vents and then breach yeah. or breach then steam vents. Like we thought right here was the right spot. Yeah. And you took the flusher storm and then, and then you hit the hydra and I was like, it just keep going. I was like, this is getting riskier and riskier. It, it felt okay and then at that point it did not feel okay. Yeah. yeah. No, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Six Kevin was taking all like yeah. fry and pithing needle and stuff like that and I'm like, uh. Yeah, I liked your vent there, uh, especially since he had taken the volcanic. I thought the I thought vent then breach would have been the right pick there. Um, it, yeah, probably would have been. Better. I thought you wanted the fetchable um, red red source. Right? Yeah, damn. So, looked at me when I made that pick and he was like come on man yeah yeah. I, I, I thought the vent there was a good call so we were debating in, in, in whether it should have been vent and breach or breach and vent yeah. but I thought the vent was a good call there uh, because I thought you know he could have easily taken it in that next pairing there yeah um, alright so is feeling anything splashy is this going to be pretty stock Thoracle you think I think it's going to be pretty stock okay. like I've seen this deck like I've, in all the drafts I've done it's done very very well right and my biggest worry is uh, playing it correctly. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it, it's tough. So, yeah, uh, nothing doomsday or anything like that. Like, not, not going that crazy. No, we'll see when we get to like pick thirty that, okay. that range. If I want to start getting a flashy, but okay. I just need to build the deck out All right. easily till then. All right. Well, uh, what about what? What other? What list do you think is? Who else outside of yourself? Who do you think is doing? Uh, that has the best draft so far. Uh, I like Adam's deck. Okay. Uh, the artifact decks are really, really powerful. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think him missing on the One Ring hurts. You yeah, know. that hurt, and the uh, the Talarian Academy. I, I mean, the Academy's fine. I think the Academy sometimes it's explosive, but it can be win Um You know, I, I think the Academy's fine, but I think that the uh, the One Ring just really, really hurts. Yeah, it does. Uh, Dan has a pretty straightforward deck, so yeah, I think if he plays it correctly, he can do pretty well. Yeah, and, and, Dan, and Dan, Dan and Adam are both very good players. Yes. So we've got... <laughs> All right. All right, cool. All right, cool, man. All yeah. right, well, thank you for coming over the interview, yeah. and uh, good luck for the rest of your draft, man. Hope, hope the cards fall your way. Thanks, sir. All right. I rearrange my window back, uncover the chat. All right, so we'll chat. What do we think? Who Who is sitting where you want to be? Which list, based at the end of round one, pack one, where do you want to be, and who's sitting in the spot that you want? Hold on, I'm answering my wife real quick, so give me a sec. Uh, So, uh, anyone who knows my productions, I like what Swifty has, right? Like, it, it's a list right up my alley. Um, you know, there's a few things that I, you know, I, I would like different there. Um, I do like, um, I think Dan's list is interesting. You know, does he end up in just a pure control, right? Or does he end up with, like, a kiki? Um, I could easily see some kind of kikiness going on there. Uh, Alex's list, I don't like the Chandra, for example, but other than that, I think Alex's list looks really solid. Um, 
like I've seen it from uh, Raging Levine before, uh, like Air uh, Black Lotus into uh, Turn One, Caves of Cast Adventurer is quite the beating. Um, it's it's pretty disgusting. Um, so he's definitely got some power. Uh, gonna be interesting to see where Varn goes. Uh, you know, a list like this is always insanely powerful, uh, but it often you know runs that risk of uh, insane amounts of hate. Uh, but definitely the artifact lists, particularly those with one ring, have done very well of recent. There's been a resurge in the power of the artifact lists. Uh, we just saw Matt and, you know, obviously the uh, Thassa's Oracle combo are super powerful. Losing the Vamp hurts, but he could easily make up for that in other ways. Um, Josh, I mentioned earlier, I think uh, my you know professional opinion would be I think Josh would benefit from a third color. Um, you know, benefit from black in there to get the removal from the trophy and or the um that abrupt decay slash tear asunder package i think those are uh and really powerful and give him a lot of interesting things uh, another card that would be really interesting uh for josh is um a kind of a mason special uh I know Mason and I discussed this in pre, 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 prelims, and then he's drafted it and I've drafted it, and it's pretty solid, um, is Deeper Wayfinder 2-3 when it deals damage to a player or battle, surveil 1, then you may return a land card from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So that could be something that would be interesting in there as well. Uh, I have returned. Great, awesome. Uh, so I was just walking through the lists, uh, and then I would got up to... Uh, so Kevin... Uh, we'll see what Kevin does. I think, you know, his deck could go a couple different ways. Mm -hmm. And the, you know, as I said, he's used to outside of the box stuff. Um, and then Patrick uh, has, uh, you know, I, I don't love the Twister, but after that, like, this looks like some pretty good white, blue, white, blue stuff. So we'll see how it pans out. Yep. So as we're looking at Josh's list, we talk about it flexing into black. Do you know what Stalactite Stalker is? Uh, let's find out. I don't think I do. All right, it's from Lost Caverns of Ixalan, so it is a All one. Right. It is a one, one for one, one black. It has menace. At All the right. beginning of your end step, if you descended this turn, put a plus one plus one counter on Stalactite Stalker. Hard stop. Then two and a black. Sack it. Target creature gets minus X minus X until end of turn, where X is Stalactite Stalker's power. So if you're just going to be churning through cards, you're going to be doing a lot of either discarding, wheeling. Uh, even casting or removal spells, you just pump your little guy, your little one right. drop. Interesting. Yeah, it's not coming up when I search it. Like, it shows like it should, but it's not bringing the image up, so... Um. Yeah, so it's a fun little one of from uh, LCI that works well in a lot of black-based lists that are attempting to just put cards in the graveyard from anywhere. Battlefield, hand, library. So it works well with Deep Root Wayfinder as well if you're surveilling. Right. Because you can just pump it up and becomes this kind of, like, little innocuous threat. He just All kind right. of pushes through. So it plays into your plan of everything. All right. I'm going to step out and go to the bathroom and grab a drink. And so you, it shows yours for a few people. Yep. Ugh. Okay, good. We're starting. So Dan picks up Library of Alexandria, which is an interesting pick. Um, Library is a fantastic card overall. The question that I have for Dan is right now it looks like Dan is looking to play more of a Flash style game, which is great. Uh, that lends itself to library, but everything seems to be a little more aggressive than you might want it to be with library. You're not looking to tap out uh, a lot on your own turn. You're not looking to play a lot of chonky cards. Uh, so we might see Library of Alexandria lose a lot of its luster around turn three or turn four, which is not necessarily where you want it to be. Um, but that'll kind of be a TBD. Alex then takes Under Mountain Adventure, was a card that Steven and I talked about earlier on. Uh, initiative is very powerful, especially for a base gruel deck if you want to flex into Nea for Comet. If that wasn't just a hate pick, then you do need some velocity, and the initiative gets you there. And yeah, I think, uh, Mason, that Stalker is, good, is a very good card, especially for VRD, when you're just trying to churn through stuff. Matt has Grief. Uh, the scan package is difficult to set up when everything's a one of. But later on, if you just want to evoke Grief, you can pump up your Stalactite pretty easily that way. Uh, I just think it might, it might not be a card that's on a lot of people's radar because it's brand new and it's immediately overshadowed by Grief in Modern. 
but there's the opportunity for it elsewhere. I don't know why GSC is unloved. I really don't. That is uh, definitely an option uh, for for Josh to pick up if you want to go with the uh, the Leovold package. I think it should be in that list if you're going to pick up, like especially Elves of the Deep Shadow to make some black mana. Why wouldn't you play GSZ and Dryad Arbor just to accelerate? That makes little sense to me. And if I had to guess purely why it's unloved Mason, it's because you're not drafting today. It will go. It might go undrafted because you are not drafting it. Yeah, uh, the poor green sun. Um, I mean, Kevin could take Painter Servant, right? Like he's got the interesting Haiti things. Uh, He's got, yeah, you know, actually, because he's got the vampiric. Like, Painter's Grindstone just might not be bad. Like, hey, I'm doing this red removally, like, whatever crap. And oops, Painter's Grindstone, right? As somebody I, that has played that deck in Legacy, you don't need four copies of everything when you have vampiric and Goblin Engineer in front of you. Yeah. So, But you, you have lost Saga already, which is a very important part of that toolkit. Who did he lose Saga to? Uh, Urza Saga went to... Oh, Urza Saga. Oh, or I was thinking, uh, different. I, I was thinking Fable. Was somebody, yeah, I heard, you said Saga, I heard Fable. <laughs> Alright, so LED goes here. We, we talked about that for Adam, that makes sense. But yeah, Saga's still floating, right? Um, Alex, Fable. I'm pretty sure is... Fable's still floating, yeah. Yes, yeah, so sorry, Fable's still floating. I don't think Alex is looking to pick up Fable right now. Um, so with the LED... Um, I think that probably means Varner's going to grab um, Salvagers and have the other infinite mana. Backup combo? With, yeah, have a backup yep. combo. And that makes perfect sense. Like, yep. Why not? Oh, yeah, Steven, you're on uh, just your beautiful face. And while I understand that people do want to see oh, that, that's you might want to also that's see true. the draft sheet. Yeah, yeah. I don't... Consultation makes sense from matt i think that might be kind of early i don't think anybody else is going to take consultation nobody's going to fight you on that card you could probably have taken a yeah but someone might hate picket i mean people are hateful fuckers man and uh, uh the the scare of, of it is so i actually like this pick get it out of the way don't allow yourself to be screwed where you've got to run um the other one and like make your mana base bad right like yep. Uh, why is nobody drafting twin? I think we could see that 37, 38, 39 out of Dan with Dak Faden. Why not take some easy up two card kill cons? Yeah, I, I just don't think it's. I don't think you need it right now. It's fine. I, I think it's very. Um, I think it can just do amazing things. Uh, I, I obviously, I mean, Dylan did great with it uh, when he came down, right? Um, I just don't necessarily. I think that. It's generally a game where you're just going to have to sit back, slow, control, control. And, you know, recently when I had it, it was like, can I control enough of the quick combos to get to where I need to be? And, you know, to draw in one piece of it. I think it's still very good. I think it's often a four and three deck is what I think, right? I think When you're just leaning into twin combo? Yeah. Dan says yeah. his plan A is twin after solidifying the small blue stuff. So there we go. So, and, yeah. and that's what I kind of thought. Because he was staying wide open, like I said, when you, you went... So Dan picked Library as you were getting up. And I don't think that's a maligned pick out of Dan. I just think we're going to lose velocity on that card right. if we land at turn one on, like, turn three or turn four. Okay. Love the Bone Crusher. Uh, love the mm -hmm. Sylvan pick here. Uh, love the Dark Confidant pick here. Okay. So we see Smuggler's Copter, and this is a question I want to ask, but I need that. A schooner is a sailboat, stupid head. Um, mm -hmm. Subterranean schooner. Can we bring that up? Yep. We this can. is a question. Oh, there's Fable for Kevin. Okay. So kind of where we expected it. Yeah. I hope Subterranean Schooner can come up. It is not coming up. So it's not bringing okay. up the newest undrafted stuff. So Got I don't it. know if it's been updated. or. Subterranean Schooner, schooner is a vehicle. One in a blue, three, four, crew one. So right. immediately it doesn't fly. It has one other toughness. Mm -hmm. When Subterranean Schooner attacks, target creature that crewed it this turn explores. Right. So you're not drawing and discarding, you're exploring. So the ability to pump that creature or draw a card. It also, but I, it's still in blue. Right. I like Schooner. Uh, I, you know, I don't know. It's interesting. I think Schooner's interesting. And is it also Crew 1? Yes, Crew 1. Yeah. But you don't get the, you don't get the draw on the block like you do with right. Smuggler's Copter, right. right? The draw on the block's nice. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. But you get one one additional toughness for it being blue, effectively, like solidifying it into a color. And I I think I wonder if that's a contested pick or somebody doesn't know about it yet, or if people just don't want to experiment with a card that doesn't fly. All all of the above, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So Swifty's got you know the 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 twist, the th- the him, the thought sees, and the I O K. So he's going to be attacking some hands here. Um, you know, solid stuff there. I really we like. Have... I really we like. Have Mox... the... He's got Mox Diamond. Diamond, yep, and Jet. I really like these picks out of Kevin. Uh, these last two picks, uh, very two of my favorite cards. Yeah, I, there's I would, nothing wrong with Kevin's draft. I think it just could have all been shifted up two picks. Right, but I mean, he got him right. So I mean, he he got that yeah. other stuff. I, and Matt was actually really not happy about losing out on um, <clears throat> both of the blasts. Right, mm-hmm. like he wanted one of those. So you know, there there are some things I, I contend with Kevin's draft, but. Yeah. I think overall, this is the best draft I've seen him have. Um, yeah. Okay, so, so Mark, I want to say something, and I want to be very clear about this. Subterranean Schooner is not way worse than Copter because it's blue. It is immediately a better card because it's blue. Is it more useful? I don't know. Pitches to a force of will. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, value reanimate there. He, he's not going hard on that, but you know you can reanimate your Thoracle to Oracle. win. Yeah. Couldn't you also take an unearth in that spot and have a card that cycles? You could, but reanimate gives you random value out of like your opponent's stuff too. Um, yeah. And it's just I, I love the value reanimate. So it makes sense. It it, it truly does. Uh, being able to uh, so does animate dead. Being able to pluck cards out of your opponent's graveyard. Oh, nice hex drinker there. Hex drinker. Yeah. Some, somewhere. Uh, uh, Somewhere Brandon's crying about it being 17 rounds late, but a uh, very solid hex drinker. Cryptic command out of Dan. Just, or, yeah, we're just every. He's gonna have a lot, a lot of triple blue and some double red and some triple red and there's. <laughs> the fairy time raveler makes sense now if you want your entire deck to have the word flash. Right. Yeah. Uh, we saw mystical tutor out of Josh. So Swifty's lost case of chaos. And mm-hmm. lost um, Comet. No Comet, but he also lost the other uh, uh, initiative, the White Initiative one. So, yep. like, you still White Plume's still good without it, but like, he probably wants to get one of these the the second tier Red Initiative or the Black Initiative guys here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Black one with Life Link. I, I don't think you need to do it now. Oh, um, geez, does that one cost six? No, no, no. They okay. uh, the only one that costs six is the blue one. They're they're all pretty reasonable after that. Okay. Like funny. I thought the they bl- all. No, the black rare is okay. Actually, the black on common is better than the black rare because it has life link and gets bigger. Um, oh, neat. Good right. once there, man. I'm really liking some of Alex's hits here. Um, he's probably I. What I'm seeing with Alex right now is he needs to go on a probably a land run. <laughs> like I'm worried about his mana in the long run, but. Uh, so we don't have Taiga yet. We don't right. have Stomping Grounds. Right. Plateau is still available, yeah. I believe. There's and a, there's a lot, but they're still going to be Savannah. picked away at, right? Like, yep. uh, no, not that. There's the Salvagers. Yep, there's the Salvagers. Yep, called that one. That's what the LED meant. Yeah, Scrub and Platt are gone. Oh, Plateau went? Yeah, right Andrew. Back. Andrew took Swifty took Scrub and Platt. There it is. The yep, yeah. back to back. Okay, yeah. so you still have Savannah available to you and yeah. Tyga. Yeah, and Savannah's not going anywhere to you, no. but you Tyga probably not either. All right, so there's the Salvagers. Reanimate in Tomb. So maybe it we pick up a small package to ensure that our Thoracle lands. Yeah, I mean uh, there is nothing wrong with you know uh, you can do some interesting things with it, like. Um, into like I don't know if he's gonna go this advanced, but like you can uh, spell seeker right like into yep. spell seeker get reanimate reanimate the spell seeker go get uh, consultation you know uh, yep. there's some interesting stuff you can do J- late yeah. JVP late JVP love it yeah I thought that would have gotten a Patrick or Dan at some yeah, point in time it would have been really good in Dan's deck uh... the top unpicked cards what do we have left from this list. Yeah, I'm going to switch over to it here after I check where JVP normally goes. So usually in round 17, so not too late, but uh, it's gone up higher. Uh, uh, Petal, Opal, Caracas, so, Wheel, and Voidwalker are like the big ones that are missing. Okay. There we go. 
it's up. No, is it updated yet? Not Mystical's yet. gone. Borrower's been gone for a while, but because we're not getting too fancy with Borrower, that's never going to come off the list. Oh, it has... Now I undid it. Um, okay, let me try this. Draft like to follow. All right. Andrew takes Relic of Progenitus squarely in the face of Matt. I don't quite know why you would do that over being literal surgical with surgical, but here we are. I mean, Relic's, with... Relic's just good random value. I mean, it, it surgical t just targets the graveyard. Relic's going to draw you the card. It's going to sit there like a snake. Kevin loves the Roy and Vortex. Again, this is the type of card he really loves. So, Yeah, but you're black. You could have also taken Nihil Spellbomb instead. Right. Relic just nibbles, so that's kind of a still a question mark. Sky Stony Clay. Silence. Good Sky. See, like, yeah. this is where, I, like, I, I think Swifty wanted a Skyclave, right? I think Swifty, like, some of these, it'll be interesting to see where he ends up. He's taking this a different direction than I would, but that's not necessarily bad. You know? Nope. Uh, yeah, Lutri's still okay, out there. Yep, there's the Lattice, which, like I said earlier, would probably be floated because Andrew is missing a lot of fast mana. Yeah, I mean, the Lotus is just coming in on the, uh, the card board, no matter what, right? So it's oh, just, for sure. But it's, so it's just a matter of, like, how long do you want to put it out there and hope someone doesn't hate it from you? Yeah, my, my only question is you have Jet, you have Diamond. Can you make it to a point in the game where you can reliably cast it for six? Oh, yeah. Without yeah. soul I mean, lands. Yeah, I mean, with Karn, you're, you know, if you're Karn in turn four, you know, you can, yeah. You don't have yeah. to ramp into it too fast. Yeah, and City of Traders is still available. Yeah. That hasn't gone yet, only Tomb. The Golem, interesting. That's an interesting pick. Uh, yeah, I don't quite know how that's going to fit into Josh's deck. Okay. Well, you know. Being an artifact makes it agnostic, but you're going to right. slow down the majority of what you're trying to do, because a lot of what you're trying to do is spell-based, so it seems... Yeah, it's a beater. For... Oh, for, is it 4-5? <coughs> or 5-3? 5-3. Okay. All right. Yeah, it, like, it does turn sideways for value, so... It has this thing... I tried to update this sheet, and now it's not... Right. We're still... Like, like I said before, so Lotus Petal... Lutri, Mox Opal, Caracas, Wheel of Fortune, Voidwalker are the right. biggest hits that are kind of left out right. floating. Um, I expect Dark Ritual to go to Andrew or Matt. Swifty. I could, if Matt leaned more into the Entomb stuff, yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Andrew just, or Swifty just seems like a, an easier call because you need that. I would want that fast mana for an early Karn. I would want it for uh, more Dispel cards for powering up the Mind Twist, for powering right. up fourth Earling. So you have two X spells, yeah. right? Yeah, I think um, he could have gone longer on the Lattice there. I think the... I think, I'm think i surprised Ritual is still out there, to be honest. Mm -hmm. like, let's... Um, and yes, we have... We effectively have Bomberman now in C3. We don't have all our little baubles to kind of float through, but we have infinite mana. Hey, Mark, the, um, uh, not picked yet, it's not updating. Can you help me out of that when you get a chance? Yeah, so Dark Rit, definitely, like, we're well behind the, uh, the Dark Rit curve. Um, I mean, the longest, yep. it, longest it's ever gone was 38, uh, but that's obviously a, a sin. Um, yeah. We have no, we have nothing surrounding the Dark Depths package being taken either, uh, aside from if you want to say Once Upon a Time. Okay. That's not complete. DFC. So, okay. Matt is leaning into the Reanimate package now with the Troxa Grand Unifier. We might see a flash from Matt. Interesting. So this did not come up in our interview with Matt. So, um, all right. So we now have our top missing cards updated, and. Uh, there's definitely some disrespect on some of these cards here. Uh, you know, Lutri, um, Sheldred, Dark Ritual. I expect if we see Lutri, it's good, probably going to go to Dan. All right, the Fable went... Uh, so, interesting stuff. All right, back to the draft. Nice delighted, delighted half halfling to Alex. Nice, it makes sense. Nice delighted halfling from Alex there. That fits very well in his shell. Uh, good V click and dig through time. 
Um, I would say he would really like that Caracas maybe, but I don't think he wants the white man, even though he's got the Deferi, I don't think he wants that many more white sources to, <laughs> with all that double blue and tr potential well, reds. And does, Is there a white source in there already? I don't think so. No, I mean, he's got the Teferi if he wants, but he doesn't have yeah. any white sources yet, so... All right, there's our first key. All right. Good and lightened. It, uh, it's fallen down the row some a bit. Um, so, yeah, interesting. I don't wonder... You know, he went in and he... Ooh, gosh. Gush fast Gush makes sense with fast bond. It's yep. good. It's good. And so Matt's still kind of... I think Matt might have just been giving us a rope-a-dope where he's showing Thoracle, but that's the backup plan to Reanimator. Or it's, you know, I don't know. Or maybe it's Borda. He, I mean, he said he, maybe he changed his mind after the interview. He didn't list it. He didn't say he was going to get cute, and uh, he's getting cute. Yeah. I got to say, Underworld Breach with Reanimate spells is kind of funny. Reanimate, reanimate, reanimate. 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 <laughs> so Stoneforge is gone. We have Skull Clamp alone in Adam's list. So that leaves Swifty kind of out to dry on that plan. Right now we're killing with Fourth Ear Lingus and a Karn Lock. Nice K command. Welcome, Arrakis. First time chat. There's the Sheldred from Kevin. So he's got Sheldred. He's got Bowmaster. He should probably grab a Wheel of Fortune to go with those, I would guess. But you never know. Right now, he's the only player set out to take advantage of it. Mm-hmm. Um, of Wheel in particular. Josh still has the opportunity to take Time Spiral and Sail to the West. Right. As draw sevens with Fast Bond. All right, Patrick's going to reality chip. That's, a little bit of card draw. That's an interesting one, reality chip. I don't think it's a bad card, but it's definitely one that um, could go anywhere. I don't think it's, it's ever been picked before. So. so with reality chip, you get to peek at any point in time, but you don't get to actually... Is it draw or cast a spell unless it's attached to a legendary creature? Yeah, it's, it's unless it's attached... Um, to a creature. It doesn't have to be a legendary. It has to be attached to yep. be able to cast a spell, lands or spells. But you can peek at any time. Mm -hmm. All right, Dovin's Veto. Okay, that's one solid. of the hardest. Yeah, one of the hardest of counters. Yeah. Scythe Claw Raptor. Is that the other Eidolon that you were asking about? No, but it's a kind of a wicked card. It's a... Uh, yeah, it is in a way, right? Whenever a player casts a spell, no matter what, if it's not their turn... So in a, any counter spell, anytime they cast a removal on their turn, it deals four damage to them. So oh okay yeah not surprised. This is a Kevin definitely. I think this card's good anyway. I think this card's playable. Uh, it's a four three for three. So right. It's, it's I think this matter. card's playable. Uh, card mm -hmm. is definitely a Kevin card though. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we don't have a lot of spells, so we're not in a um, a monastery swift spear kind of shell. No, no, no. That's not. I think we see something. And Kevin's like, been known to try, like, you know, again, like, he's not had great success with it, mind you, but he's been known to try, like, uh, I'm going to uh, transitive, transitionary sideboard type stuff. Like, yeah, okay. hey, I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to switch over and be a more of a Punisher deck, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out. So we don't have, a, like, a ton of velocity here. We're kind of just drawing one card a turn. If we're Kevin, so I was thinking, like, aside from Lelio, right? So maybe we would want to double down on that style of effect and maybe run a Beaumont Courier. Right. I can sneak see that. a little damage in, draw some cards in time. Um, we missed out on four mana. Chandra, uh, Torch of Defiance. Alex has got that. Yeah. So that leaves us with, like, Outland Siege. It's one of the only options left, I think. If we didn't want to do... Um, <laughs> Frexian Arena. Yeah, that's way too slow. I mean, that, yeah. Know, that. Um, Confidant went to Swifty. Um, mm -hmm. I could see it's gonna be rough with Bob that he does it, but I could see Swifty running like a big finishery, like six mana Elspeth or five mana Elspeth here somewhere as well. Not here in this pick, but like in the deck. 
Oh, and also and have Swifty also flex into Mardu. Oh, he's already in Mardu. I mean, he's in. He? He's oh, in yeah, White Blue Adventure. Yeah, 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 sorry, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Dovin, Plateau, fourth, yep. fourth Aerolingus. You know, right now he's basically attacking the hand and then you know counting on fourth and Karn to get in there, and that's not bad. I mean, those are good get there's. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have Fury, you don't have Grief. Those went elsewhere. Right. Yeah, he would have loved some Grief. Mm -hmm. uh, the Reanimate also plays well with the Grief over in you know so in uh, in Matt's deck, right? He's got a little yeah. scam, scam going on. So what else can we do here? For Alex, like yeah, I think closing out the game, like you pointed out, is definitely something we need to look into at this point in time, or maybe finding a little more velocity besides Bob. There's Voidwalker, okay. Yeah, it's, that's uh, again, uh, you know, you mentioned earlier. I think his deck makes sense for the Helm uh, combo as well. Like, you know, even having Voidwalker main and then uh, Carning in the Helm is like pretty good. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Like your Shredder, all right. Ledger Shredder is another one that like peaked really high and then kind of fell off quite a bit. I don't know. Yeah, why. like we don't. Like, he we don't have a. He wins games quite a bit, but uh, sometimes like you know, especially if you get like, and I don't think Josh is in risk of this, but especially if you kind of get hell bent, it kind of sucks, you know. Well, that that okay. I was looking at this from the other direction. I don't know what two spells we're casting in a given turn. I think you're counting on other people to it. There's the dark red, which yep. yeah, I think. So. I think. If I had Swifty, I think I'd be a little miffed about that. Yeah, well, I mean, that, if that's Swifty, it's his own fault for letting Dark Rit fall that far, right? I mean, that's the... Exactly. Like, that, yeah. that's, that, I would be mad at myself, basically. Right. I mean, he drafted a Sorcerer Spyglass well before it's time, and, uh, you know... Yeah. But like I said, going back to Josh, I just don't know... We All the... Or not all, the majority of the blue cantrips are already gone, so I don't know what we're casting to trigger it. If we're relying on other people to trigger it, that seems... All right. I mean, yeah, interesting. Yeah. I think that might be Josh just has not really had the time to investigate what other versions of Murktide Regent there are. Right. Or, I mean, he's just, you know, as I said, this is his first Verity. He's, uh, it's, uh, I'm, these are powerful cube cards, and I'm a cube guy, and, right, these are cards sure. that make a lot of sense in that world right they all do powerful but nothing he's drafted doesn't do powerful things yeah um, no, for sure so the only reason i know about merc tide at home is because i spent a lot of time in legacy trying to put together a deck that played effectively like eight or twelve merc tides right so all right tef here of dominaria that's the five mana tef yeah. three blue big, and white big hero d so we're looking to... So the plus is to untap two... Draw a card, untap two lands at the end of your turn, and the minus is to tuck... Is yeah. it a creature or a non-land permanent? Non-land permanent. It's so good. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's just... And like, I always just love that art. It looks like he's he just dropped our Hot Rap album. Like, he's just got the oh, yeah. cover. He's just like, he's coming at you. Coming at you from Dominaria. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be a depths in this draft. I don't see it... Um, Obviously, it's very powerful, but you've got to really build for it. And I just don't see a list here that jumps over um, the Depths world. So. Alex now has both Hierarchs. Right. So I was saying he needed to go on a land run. And he says, no, I'm going to go Delighted Halfling, Noble, noble and Ignoble. I'm going to I'm gonna fix my mana with Dorks. And, yeah. I, have, I, and I have the Fury, um, so I, I can't get blown out like that. And yep. the rest of the creature removal is spread across the draft right, right now. Right, So Sheldoc, uh, somewhere Stee is low and like, oh, that's a late Sheldoc. Uh, you know, Sheldoc, yep, po powerful card, does powerful things in this format. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> just as a value. He's, yep, and to consider, so for Josh, we have a few. Now we're ver verging on bad blue cantrips left. Yeah. Oh, Questing, questing Beast. beast. Love the Beast. Yeah. Card's so good. I like taking that over um, better Quarian Dryad right here because Josh is also looking to compete for Questing Beast, but not yeah. the Dryad. Yeah, no one else is. I don't think anyone else is taking that Dryad. So nope. if, if he decides to take the Dryad at some point, uh, the it new is dryad. squarely yours. Right. Yeah. That, that, that is. I think that's a heads up. Yeah. Draft. I think it's a very good. Am I? Is it late Questing Beast? Um, uh, it's 
Yeah, but 22. It's it's normal. I mean, it, it's gone. Okay. Uh, highest it's ever gone was eight. Mm. Um, and then lowest it's it's gone undrafted. You know, so it's 21 yeah. out of 31. So, and it, yeah, and I think every planeswalker that gets taken makes questing beasts look a little bit better. Yeah, and it's just so hard. It's just so. When you resolve it quick, it's just such a beating uh, yep. it can do. And he's got initiative guys, which makes it bigger. And it is absolutely the best free cast when you finish Undercity. When you get it, get it, it gets bigger and gets hexproof. It's um, also uncounterable off of Delighted Halfling because right. it's a legendary. Yeah. So when you finish the Undercity and you get to the creature out of the top 10, like most of them don't have haste, so they can't attack that turn, right? Yep. Well, Questing Beast is like, I'm a 7-7 Hexproof, vigilance, death, touch, haste, right? And that's just At me, bro. Uh, yeah, yeah. So transmute. We're just gonna solidify up. Uh, make sure we're getting what we want to get. Yeah, our alternative tinkers. Right, getting our combo run. Yep. We ain't got tinker, but we're good enough. Yeah, yeah. There are a handful of other options that are available to us in that spot too. We don't absolutely need tinker. We have redundancy. So, with the time walk, like. And what he's got here, and this like alternative Thoracle shell, I could see mm -hmm. it. I could see Dreadhorde, um, or I could see uh, what is the new blue uh, Dreadhorde card, um, the one that can't be blocked. Oh, the bird? No, uh, no, not... it's not brand new. It's uh, oil. It's one of the oil cards. Oh, oh, uh, not. Mercury yeah. Mercurial Spell Dancer? Yeah, Mercurial. Yeah. Like, this could be pretty good in his deck there, because, like, it gets back time walk. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, well, the Arcanist, you got to pump it up, and right now we have no way to pump right, it. Right, so. right, right. Yeah, so this would be better than that. Um, Master, Ma seems... Master Plum went 7-0 with a Spell Dancer Thoracle time walk list. Um, oh, okay. Pretty good. Yeah, the, that makes sense, but I think this might also be another... I don't think anybody's going to take that card from underneath you. This no, just seems no. like kind of a pivotal pick for Matt. Like, what are we going to be doing? And apparently we're leaning further into the Thoracal combo. Or just take, pact. taking the other one, yeah. Yep. Now, you know, that's a little riskier because you gotta, you got to get your lands right, you know. Mm -hmm. All right, so I think at this point, Josh, the bla the audible for black, or and the, the going to black is off for Josh, which is a shame. Okay. Uh, love the Caracas from Andrew there. That's solid, solid. Yep, again, another card that just picks up value the longer it's the just, draft goes, so floating it makes so, more sense. Yeah, just so good, right? Like, yeah. there's just so many like, so many decks I've had where I just flat lose to a Caracas. Like, uh, a couple VRD presents ago I was playing, and, like, I, I have the win in hand, except for she has Caracas out, because my win involves dropping Ur Urbrask and comboing off. And I mean, like... again, as a Legacy player, I play Sneak mainly and yeah. that Caracas is a card i hate and it's the reason i now play archon of cruelty in my list because right. it's not a legend yeah i hate Caracas. also a leyline binding that card is terrible yeah now sadly uh you know for for my buddy dan out there if he's watching or listening sadly i don't think anyone in this draft is set up for beans uh you know <laughs> there are no beans no. today we're not going to see the the disc the vrd debut of beans but i'm waiting for it it's coming it feels like Alex is would be the closest, and then Josh yeah. right behind him, but yeah. only because Alex has so much ramp on his creatures already that yeah. he could start casting fives. But he doesn't have any five drops. <laughs> That's yeah. kind of the problem. Yeah, uh, Rabble Master. So again, that red, that oh, nice Lorien revealed there. So that red three drop spot's very glutted. Uh, yep. But that's, but he's got you know I. Again, out of Kevin's drafts, this was my favorite he's done, right? Because he's got that Soul Ring Mox to start with. So, like, mm -hmm. he can get that Rabble Master really quick and let it start running to town. Yep, um, and, and you don't need the Ragavan when you've got both of those. You can just skip straight past Ragavan and get yeah. to your threes. Yeah, I love the Lorien Revealed here. That's very solid. That would have been good in several of these decks. Yeah. Um, so. Um, all right, I'm folks. Curious. You know, we haven't said for a bit. We haven't said thank nope. you for tuning in to St. Lotus. This is St. Lotus 13, and I am Stephen Hagen. And I am Peter Kurtzberger. I also halt I am Reptar on the MTG Cabalcast. And we are here bringing you. We are in the middle of round 24. Uh, we have uh, a couple VRD uh, vets. 
a couple hardcore grinders slash cube enthusiasts uh, and great players with some pro points that are um, here doing their first VRD and a couple of folks that have done some VRDs but have typically done them on the slightly less competitive side. So we are uh, got an interesting gamut, a lot of new faces. Uh, we don't have uh, our closest to a regular out of these is Andrew Swift uh, from Chicago. Uh, but we don't have any of our Brandons, our Cody's, our, our normal uh, super regulars. Um, so we have, uh, Cody was going to be here today, but he had uh, worked 62 hours this week and had to work overtime today. Um, so we are here and we are having fun. And there we go with the Triome and then another of these hateful... Um, Kevin cards that Kevin likes so much. So I, I, I like Kevin's game plan, which is just, if you want to play Magic, I'm going to make it really painful. And if he picks Zozu, I'm going to be so happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, March. Nice, solid March out of, out of out of Swifty. Like, you know, just, again, good removal. Uh, is that late or is that on time for March? Because we uh, talked about it a lot earlier um, against the Prismatic ending pick. Yeah, I... March is... Um... Oh, just on time. <laughs> Spot on time. Perfect. Right? Yep. Uh, and then Ottawa and Pedal very, finally going. Yeah. Uh, late Pedal. Uh, the Ottawa there is nice because Ottawa is also one of the things that really messes can stop a blight steal. <laughs> yep. Uh, okay, so we're gonna see Sword of the Meek picked up by Adam most likely, and I think yeah. now we're getting into a territory where we're just doing a lot of mid-range cruft. Yeah, I mean, he's got a good combo. The thing about Adam's probably got to start thinking about at some point, and this is, you know, I say this all the time, I'm like a parrot on this, right? Um, is this could be one of those, this is his first VRD, the too many main deck cards, right? Too many cooks. Uh, at some point, we Adam's got to start saying, okay, well, what am I doing? Now, he's got the blue elemental blast, so we have mm -hmm. that, right? But, like, right now, if all of these are main, his main's done, right? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, more or less. Uh, so he's got to start thinking about uh, sideboard thoughts as well at some yeah. point. Yeah. So Adam's doing something that I really dislike um, in in Magic in general, and people are just like, oh, you can go infinite with this. Adam right. can go infinite and make infinite Thopters right now. Once, yeah. once they pick up Thorn, you just start the Bomberman combo. And for those that don't know, you can buy back uh, Lion's Eye Diamond with Oriox Salvagers netting a white mana every time. So you make infinite white mana, and then you can turn infinite white mana into whatever colors you want. And once you have infinite mana, you can keep sacrificing Sword of the Meek to Thopter Finder, and you make infinite Thopters. Right. But or you have to enter combat. Or with Urza, you... Yeah, but you also have infinite life, right? So, like, it's bad against the Thoracle, but... You know, with Urza, you can just do it as well. So that's the thing yep. with the Thopter Foundry Sword, is you just go Urza, Thopter Foundry Sword, and mm, okay, I win. Sure. Um, but ent entering combat, when someone's like, oh, I can go infinite, I win. Like, you have to enter combat. Like, right. if, if, if one person, or not one person, if somebody picks up Echoing Truth, you're done. Uh, echoing Decay, you're done. Uh, echoing Red, yeah. I think you're done. But I think there's a lot of stuff that can stop it. Like my, pro I've, I, yeah, I've drafted Urza like ten times, right? So I've drafted Urza more than anybody for sure. Um, I, I think the problem often with Urza is once you have Urza, it's like, oh well, I probably should go ahead and get Winter Orb, right? Because yeah. it's so good together. And then it's like, oh, I should probably go ahead and grab Thopter Sword. And at that yeah. point, your Urza package just becomes so thick, you're losing out on all these other good slots. So like, I think that's one of the Urza traps is that okay, yeah. there's so many things that go good with it, like this, like, okay, well, I got Urza, and I've got Infinite Mana, I might as well have Dr. Sword, and then it's like, oh, I've got Urza, well, it so, plays so great with Winter Orb, I might as well grab that. Um, well, okay, well, now what do I have left? Yeah, and... I want... I, I just want to be clear, like Mason's mentioning in chat, you also have Walking Ballista. Like, I'm not talking about Walking Ballista, because that one's on the spot. I'm talking about these combos that involve actually passing the turn. Right. You, you just don't and, like the and... Dr. Sword as much, you know, because... Infinite life, like, well, we saw in the last VRD, right? Like, infinite life only goes so far. Like, we had two games where the person either had infinite life or had uh, an ability to die, uh, and they both lost, right? Yes. <laughs> like, like, it is an interesting thing, especially in a world of Thoracle. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah. Or we have a Blightsteel Colossus out here. If Josh picks up any of the Echoings, like I mentioned, or even Pyroclasm, all your tokens are gone, and now you're dead to Blightsteel. Yeah. So, it, like, it, I want to call this... But, it's not quite. It's kind of like a not like gambler's fallacy, but it's close. Where it's just like I'm going to make infinity, and then I'm going to win because that's just how it works, but not all the time. Right. And if there is a way to turn all those infinite thopters into damage, like right. if there's just a goblin bombardment, I'd be happy with it. Right. Well, the other thing is like you know, depending on the version of it, you don't have to do it on your turn, right? So I don't know. Yeah. It it's definitely good. I've won a lot of games with it, but I do agree there is. It's not the best thing I want to be doing. Um, but, it, it, you know, the majority of times when you get it, you win, right? Like yes. That's, and again, uh, I'm not just like, it is, if, if Adam stopped here with the combo, I would be very nervous. And if this is just me as a player, I don't like having to wait on my infinite combo a full right. turn. That's it. All right. Back to our Metro picks here. We got Liberator after the founder. Liberator is very good. Uh, there's just a lot of good, there's a lot of good, but I don't love this here because there's so many good cards that do the exact same thing. But this yeah. is a very good sideboard card, right? Like, and I, I'm okay with this pick because this and his next pick of Skews, he's like, hey, I've got all these good stuff. Now I'm going to do some sideboard stuff that does. Um, he had delighted half lane, so I think I would have gone Lauren over to Liberator for that, right? Like, but uh, uh, No Rod seems really strong there. Uh, nothing wrong with that. Fire Eye, it's good. Um, Meek, Hercules, good. You know, always. Yeah, We're, some great picks overall. Metamorph. I don't, what's he doing with metamorph? I mean, what are you metamorphing? Anything on the battlefield? I guess. I don't know. I mean, I, I so I love metamorph. It's one of my favorite cards in VRD. I love it with initiative guys in particular. Um, I discovered through matches online something that I didn't realize. So one ring has tricky wording. This is, uh, so we got a survive try over there. It's when it's cast, you can't clone it. it. No, no, it's, it is yes and no. It is a different kind of cast trigger, right? So, it says, when the One Ring enters the battlefield, if you cast if it. If you cast it, yeah. So, Phyrexian Metamorph enters the battlefield as the One Ring, right? Yeah. But it was cast. So it's not a cast trigger. It doesn't trigger on cast. It's an enters the battlefield trigger that looks back on being cast. So you can okay. loop a Metamorph and a One Ring with um, um, Emery. Okay, that that makes more sense than what I was thinking, which is just the game looks back and saw you cast Phyrexian Metamorph because no, that's the object it, from your hand. Right. No, it's yeah. tricky. I didn't know. I didn't realize this at first either. Like, so I got this uh, pull yeah, on yeah. me, and I was just like, that doesn't work. And then they're like, no, look at it. And I'm like, oh, that's a really weird worded trigger, right? Yeah. It is a... Um, it is a cast trigger. It's not a cast trigger. It doesn't trigger on the cast. It triggers on entering the battlefield. Yep. It looks. It's a reflexive trigger that looks back to if it's cast. All right, and uh, this is why we have like eleven levels of judge at these events. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so we got. Let's talk some shop, man. So we got Felden. Uh, can't block. Which, yeah. And, can we bring that up in the card viewer? Yeah. I've got no idea what this one does. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's even going to come up, but uh, it's. It, yeah, let's see. Felden running. It. There we go. So it cannot block. If it's dealt damage. Exile that many cards from the top of your library and choose one of them until the end of turn. You may cast that card. Okay. <laughs> I would like this guy if it was until the end of your next turn you could cast yep. that card. And I don't like that it's just... Oh, it's play that card, so you can't play the lands. Then we've got Iconoclast. Uh, Iconoclast is great. Um, it's Mentor number two? Yeah. I'm a little more down on it lately. It's been awkward for me when I've drafted it a couple times, but it's a good card. Uh, Helix. Oh, for sure. I think Helix is underdrafted. I, I I think Helix is is vastly underdrafted. Uh, I was wondering where we were going with Rogrin Triome, and this is it. Right. This is where we're going now. Uh, so yeah, Helix very rarely drafted, uh, but at three out of thirty-one. Uh, and this, so this is way early. He could get this whenever he wanted it. Uh, I think but, we're just in on this package now, and yeah. I think Patrick is making sure that he gets the cards he needs. For this package. All right, what the hell is this thing? Uh, this thing's Indeed. not going to come up. So I'm a, we're going to have to look at it in the t chat here because it's not going to come up on the... It is from thing. Lost Caverns of yeah. Ixalan. Whenever it is one and a red for a 2-2. Two -two. Whenever, you, Whenever attack, you attack... Let me okay. discard a card. Put a 1-1 one -one counter on target attacking creature against Trample. Okay. Mm -hmm. Discard one or more cards. So it, it's, it's card efficiency, right? Yep. It's a two drop. It's not bad. It doesn't have you, haste. I mean, no. But here's the velocity that I was talking about earlier, where it seems yeah. like Evan was missing a little velocity, and this is it. Now we're yeah. running into velocity. Yeah. 
I love. Oh, okay, I like the bitter blossom pick there. Does, is the clamp gone? It is gone. Okay, I love the uh, stern. Adam scolding. has it. I love the stern scolding pick. Mm-hmm. And I love the energy flux pick. <laughs> energy flux is maybe the most back breaking uh, sideboard card. I yeah the the back to back double middle fingers from yeah. Matt on this one yeah. yeah. Uh, I think I've I've lost one time when I had Energy Flux out against the Artifact deck. They still were able to pull it off, and it was ridiculous, but um, it's pretty backbreaking. I think that was actually Mason that beat me through Energy Flux, and I, I wanted to drive Chicago and punch him and then hug him because I love him. But, um. All right. Adam with yet another... Wait, is Word the draw card or is Word Tinker at home? Word's Tinker, uh, Improvised Tinker. It's Tinker at home. You don't have to sack, though, so you just get a search put into play. Yep, so perfect. Adam's just going through all the tinkers now. Oh, Alex with Alex with Lotus at home. Yep, <laughs> the lumberjacks, and then Dan straight into twin combo. Yeah. So whoever was talking about the before in chat, here we go. I love some Orcish lumberjack. This is the second time Alex has drafted Orcish lumberjack. So Alex, so there's one out of one of thirty one. The other one's Alex. <laughs> so Alex obviously loves some Orcish lumberjack. Uh, so we. I knew we were probably going to get Yavimaya out of Alex, but I think this is just the glaring signal that we're going to get Yavimaya. Yeah, and there's the Savannah. So um, so with the Lumberjack and with the Strip Mine, now um, ramming up would be really good in his list, right? I don't think you want the Crucible. Uh, I think you want the ramming up. Crucible is not gone, okay. Neither are gone, right? But no. I just I, wanted to make sure I didn't miss Crucible. Yeah. yeah. In Mother Russia, Crucible misses you. <laughs> All right, so All right. I wonder. So does this is a dumb question about balance? I should know this. We don't balance planeswalkers because we, we, we don't balance planeswalkers. We don't balance artifacts. Artifacts. And we, don't balance that's the other one. And we don't balance enchantments. I don't think. Okay, I wanted to make sure it was artifacts. Well, let's, let's do it the easy way. I was going to do the hard way, but let's pull it up into. Yeah, Scarred we, and we, sack creatures and lands. Yeah, yeah. Yep. we don't balance okay. enchantments. But sadly, the no one's ever. The people have done the balance artifacts list. People have done the balance walkers list. No one yet has done the balance enchantments list. So uh, nobody's wanted to go ham on opalescence man, and uh, like, Sarah Sanctum. We've talked about it. Trust me. And it, like the one time, like there was a there was an online one where. Uh, Brandon was going to do some enchantment shenanigans, and the exact same draft, Swifty decided to do Boggles, and it was just like uh, the same draft. They both decided to like try to do the enchantments list, and that it screwed everybody up. So I yeah. gotta go grab a natter day. I'll be right back. All right. So Adam with the Batter Skull for the Stoneforge Mystic, which is a question I had, which is just where we where we were going with the Stoneforge. Uh, I think we are still clearly the only player in this draft that wants. Call drug complete, so it's safe to just let that one float. Frantic search from Matt is just a great draw spell. We have a lot of options to discard in front of us with the reanimate package, so that's not a drawback on topping the lens. is fantastic off of this. I don't think we'll see any other part of the combo related to untapping lands, so there won't be any high tide or time spiral uh, from Matt. I would expect that more from Josh because we have the fast bond, but we'll see kind of where Josh wants to take this overall. Um, I think if I was Alex, though, I'd be happy with where I am, and the only card I would want to definitively get back is Taiga, uh, because I am the only player in that slot that can use it. Nobody else is really playing Gruul or going to flex in. I would not expect Josh to move in from Simic to Teamer. I would still expect either a Sultai or a Bant look before Teamer. Unless Josh really did just want to move in on wheels eventually, which is still an option. From Kevin, though, I'm kind of curious where we would want to be. Um, there is the opportunity to play cards like Professional Facebreaker. Uh if you're Kevin and make a bunch of treasures because that's kind of what red does right now. There are a lot of efficient cards that make treasures and face breaker can turn them into this kind of pseudo velocity that we're seeing with felt both Felden and Inti where we can see what I'm just pontificating about professional face breaker for Kevin. 
Oh, special face breaker would be interesting. I mean, the problem is, I mean, he's got the Mox and Soul Ring, so he's probably okay to get it out. But then you're just gonna have a bunch of non-hasty. Like, I like face breaker. I think it's playable. Um, but he's just gonna have a glut of three drops. Uh, like the Force, authority, interesting. Oh yeah, everything comes into play tapped. Get mm -hmm. wrecked. Um, but at least with if you're gonna make treasures like Dockside Extortionist is always a good look. There are a number of red cards that draw that draw and create treasures so you can at least get a bit of mana value velocity that way with treasures i love some rectos charm i think this card's probably underdrafted it, it does a lot of versatile things kits a graveyard destroys an artifact and sometimes just blows people out of the game yeah um i i, I do want to make the point that facebreaker doesn't actually have to attack to do anything that i need true. everybody to understand this no that's true you win on that yeah, Facebreaker and um, Edrix by a Master of Trust, they both just sit there right. and so provide like, value. Like, you can go, like, in, like you know, NT into, or that, that uh, Felden guy into Facebreaker, and then the Felden attacks, and you get the value. So, that is true. Yeah. Facebreaker only has two power. It has Menace. So, you could it's a three shoot two. it up. It's a 3 2. So I was just looking at it. Oh, is it? 2 oh, three. Three, 2 3. Okay. I knew it had three, three somewhere. Three yeah. Yes. So it not having haste isn't like a super downside because you just gain value off of your creatures attacking. It's really good after a rabble master. Right. So it's an interesting one. I, I have thought <laughs> about it before, but that that is and that slot's just so full of stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, that hundred percent in just in agreement with. It's just if you wanted to turn, if you wanted to find more velocity, like creating treasures, because that's what a red can do with something like dockside, which is a very easy play. Mm -hmm. Facebreaker can at least turn them into value. So you have Council's Judgment from Patrick, which is probably one of the last best yeah, I mean, white it, removal spells available. It used to, to see a, it used to see a whole lot of drafts, and then as like other white removal came up, it went down. It fell down, right? Yeah, but this is about where it goes. See, I mean, nine out of thirty-one, but usually in this round. Yep. Subtlety into delayed blast fireball. Right. Okay. So here I am defending Kevin, and then we get this bullshit. <laughs> All right, I gotta look this card up. Yeah, it's not gonna come up on here. It ain't never been. Picked. All right, one, two, and double red for an instant delayed oh, yeah. blast fireball deals two damage to each opponent and each creature they control. So it's like volcanic fallout. Mm -hmm. If this spell was cast from exile, it deals five damage instead, and it has foretell of four and double red. Right. I I, I wonder if this is just a sideboard card for uh, Thopper shenanigans from Adam. No, it's just a cutesy. Really? It's it's kind of make a mistake. I mean, if you want to do Thopter, you just do Pyroclasm. Uh, he's got the Exile stuff. It's I think this is a, a good commander card in like Prosper and in like Thaldorn and the variety of those like Cash from Exile decks. Yeah. But like, it just doesn't do anything here. Like, okay. it, it's a mistake, is what it is. Like, I really liked his most recent picks. Like, I'm not I'm not sure on the Feldman in the in the entry, but like a lot of these I've been high on. Uh, but like. I don't like this one. I do like the subtlety there, though. Um, yeah. No, no, that's a good, that's a good pickup this late. It's actually not too late. Um, what, what's interesting in the subtlety is it, it's another one that's, like, um, okay in some ways, right? But, like, there's sometimes... Uh, it, it's 25, so it's a little bit late. But uh, okay. Cody, a couple drafts ago, had the most amazing... Uh, Levine tried to go before he left for work for Wizards before we lost uh, the great Eric Levine to the world of uh, corporate w w uh, rules uh, Levine like went turn one Caves of Chaos Adventurer and oh. Cody evoked subtly oh my god <laughs> so Levine lost the Lotus and uh... <coughs> alright so there's Lauren very good Lauren uh, I like that Courser there that's solid um, and there's the animate dead okay Corsair's interesting. You 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 gain the land, you gain the life off of playing from the top of the library, but it doesn't offer much it's a, else. It's a it's a really good blocker. Um, yeah, two four for three. It plays really well with fast bond. Yep. Uh, it gives them so it gives you a little bit. Of, it give, it does dig you a little deeper, right? Like you've got that land on the top, you play it, and you see get to the next card. So yeah. it does, especially with Sylvan, right? Like you can set some stuff up. So. Um. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Augur of Autumn. That was the card I was thinking of. 
I thought, like, isn't Augur just a smidge better? I, you may look at the top part his, of the library. Not in his deck, but I okay. I have drafted Augur. Augur. Uh, that one draft is me. Um, I think Augur is an underrated card by far, right? Yeah. So you can do... Because, it, if you don't have the fast bottom, so you don't care about the land, and you're mm -hmm. in a creature deck. Yep. Right? Like, I like Augur. I think Augur is slept on quite a bit. It allows you to play, land, play lands off the top, which Courser... The, Corsair does as well, right? But you can't play an additional land. Right. Actually, that Augur's not yeah. me. It must have been. A, I must have drafted Augur in a different format. I like Augur though. I've thought about it a lot. Yeah. Um, so there's the Pestermite. So we got the Spell Bomb to uh, just you know for value. Um, I and... don't get Aether Spell Bomb over the red one, uh, Pyrite Spell Bomb. He doesn't have the red mana yet, I guess, and it just draws you the card. It doesn't. What win do you mean? He has LED. Oh, I guess he does. Yeah. I don't know. Unless you're going to pay, like, the, the original spell bombs. E Ether's yeah. not for combo. Ether's just better for defending yourself and, you know, protecting but, yourself. So that's what I'm getting at. The the protection on the activated ability that doesn't draw a card requires a colorless mana on the original spell bombs. Right. Right? It's drawing the card that requires the... No, it, the, the activated ability requires the color. Drawing the card required is colorless. Okay. So Elf Sprawl, so we're, again, we're just p fixing that mana, speeding that up a little bit, getting some velocity. Do you think we'll see Pact out of Dan? Pact of Negation? Um, I think we're more likely to see it out of Matt, but we could. Okay. I mean, because Matt, if Matt's trying to win, you don't, you don't care about it, right? Like, that's the... Yeah, yeah. Pacting on your in both in both instances, it's pacting on your turn because you're going to effectively win with haste. Right. Because you can't. Nothing about Matt's list. Can Matt win at instant speed in response to a pack trigger? Uh, there goes the loot tree. That's a late loot tree. So late. Bristle dad from Matt. So we're still leaning in on the reanimator plan. Yeah, we're leaning in heavy. So I don't know if this is going to be transformative or double up or what, but... So Lutri is 30 out of 30. There was a draft where Lutri didn't go. What? Somewhere. An otter is crying. I wonder if it was like the first Lutri draft. Uh, I don't know. We could dig in. I could dig in, but not worth it. There was a let draft somewhere that Lutri didn't go. Looks like it didn't go in St. Lotus Presents 1. Okay. Literally the first the first one. No, that wasn't the first St. Lotus. That was the first St. Lotus Presents. Those are our sub our subgroup that we don't stream necessarily. It's oh, our okay. it's our it's our farm league as we you know, where we sometimes find new players. <laughs> Got it. I think Mark won that one with like a reanimator shell. So, but yeah, that's right. where it didn't go. Um, I wonder if we'll see Matt take Bazaar. All right. So Kevin just talked to Mark about the fireball, and he does not hate it anymore. So, um, I don't know. Bazaar is so it's high and low end, right? Like it's <laughs> yeah, it's so good and so not good at the same time. Like I don't think so. I, I don't think we will. It's, it doesn't seem like the worst option for Matt. I just don't know where exactly we're going to end with this list. Right. Like, do we have... We have Animate, and we have... Reanimate, but we don't have... And there's no Necromancy, there's no Dance of the Dead. Right. <laughs> right. We, we got Animate, Reanimate. Yeah, that, that's... Uh, so Josh in the tank a bit here. What are we going to go with? Did we talk about Lauren of the Third Path for Swifty? I uh, yeah, I had not mentioned it for Swifty. I had mentioned it earlier. I would have liked it over Outland Liberator for Alex, but I mean it makes perfect sense for Swifty here. Okay, so you would have liked to see Alex lean a little more into the nail side of things after well, picking up Comet. Well, I think that since he had the delighted halfling, I think Lauren just made more uh, okay. more sense, right, than Got Outland it. Liberator. Um, yep. And it gives you the little bit of upside of I can draw a card, right? You know, yeah, they get a, yeah. they, they get a card too, but like you know, I'm still. 
When you've got them in a resource squeeze. Right. Like you have the opportunity to. It's not the worst thing in the world to fill their hand. All right. Let's go look at our top missing cards. Uh, again, I think Castle Garbrig's not really... Uh, it's, it's a data anomaly, so no. Yeah. That. Opal. Opal. Wheel. Potentially. I, I don't... Opal could all not go. I mean, it's 27 out of 31, so it is possible just to not go. It's it's high risk, high reward. Mm-hmm. Um, wheel. Surprise wheel's not gone yet. Uh, the, the lands will go. Probably, probably not the Bayou, to be honest. Like, the Bayou may not go. Um, we haven't seen Josh flex into anything else yet, so that could be... Right. A pickup for Josh. Yeah. If he does flex into it like I think he should, then that's there. Mm-hmm. Um, Virtue of Loyalty, again, it's an anomaly, but this card's really good in the format. Uh, I don't know if any of these lists want it, but it's pretty sick. Yep. Um, Crucible Quest enjoyed. Confluence. Uh, a couple lists could do the Luris here. Yeah, I think Kevin could take Luris. Um, if, Josh could take Luris. Or uh, uh, the, the Thoracle list could take Luris. Uh, there's a couple of this. You Painter. just missed Swifty taking a Johnny Vengeant. All right. And I love a Johnny Vengeant, so that works for me. Um, he could get it later, I mean, for sure. He doesn't have to take it there. But uh, I let me tell you how amazing a turn to a Johnny Vengeant is. <laughs> this <laughs> format. Uh, where you're like, uh, turn one, Ancient Tomb, turn two, yep. uh, Mox, turn two... Uh, actually, turn one, Johnny Vengeance, was Ancient Tomb, Mox, uh, pitch a uh, Simeon Spirit Guide, a Johnny Vengeance. Yep, yeah. <laughs> oh, Krinko. Which Krinko is this? Put a one on that. Okay, it's, it's... It's the new one. Right, the new one. The Mentor one? Right. And it's not Mentor. This is just creates God. Kind of Mentor. It, when it attacks, oh, I was thinking of Legion War Boss that has Mentor. Right, okay, right. yeah. Fire Ice Classic, very good with the um, uh, with, mentor. With everything else, yeah, yeah. With the mentor and the iconoclast. Uh, I mean, so if he's going to go hard to this, uh, so there's then some questions about. Okay, well, what does he want? If he's how hard is he going to go into the um, spell Z list? Uh, and with that you get like, does he want Sprite Dragon? Yep. Um, so but, here's our here's the first discover card. Does he want Balmor? Right, those are okay. So we've got Gila. So this one is one of the new. He's not going to come up here. This is one of the new combo cards, but I don't think he's going to be comboing with it. Uh, this, Mark, uh, I mean, oh, I this is definitely a combo card. But I think of all the cards with discover that are being used in the combo, I think this is the one that is like the most bland right it, it is like the lowest on the totem pole two double red for a three two when it etbs if you cast it discover three that's the end of the card that's all it does right it's a three two that discovers three i, I don't like this pick of his deck like i don't think it's that i, I mean he's got the soul ring so it's, that's not bad like casting that on turn two seems pretty good uh but i don't love it we were talking about a glut of cards at the three drop slot, and I think this just adds another one there. I, I think there's one, if there's one that discovers four, I think would have liked that more. Otherwise, you got to go way far up the chain to um, Trumpet and Carnosaur. Or, like we talked about before the show, you're in Mardu, you could go with Quintorius Cond, right. which also discovers three, but has additional value because it's a planeswalker. Right, and makes guys. And there's the Trumpet and Carnosaur. <laughs> Uh, that is going to be very good for Alex, who can accelerate right into that thing. Um, and th- that here's the thing about Carnosaur, and I had, I mean, and why I think about this card's good here. That second ability isn't to be sneezed at. No, the discard for damage. Yeah. Like the like, okay, this thing in my hand, I'm not going to be. I need to remove that guy. I need to remove that to fairy. Right, like that is not a be sneezed at ability. It's not a good mana return. Uh, but there is the Opal. Um, I don't like the Death Ride out of Josh. I don't think he has enough fetches, but, you know, maybe he's hoping everyone else has enough fetches. You know, I don't love it. Um, maybe he's just hoping the ping kind of... With the Cabal Therapy, um, I would not be surprised to see a um, Lingering Souls out of Swifty. Uh, though I okay. gu- I guarantee he that uh, uh, losing that Clamp's upsetting. For sure. With Cabal Therapy, I always hope for Arena Rector, because nobody really plays Arena Rector. 
we have no real good enchantments to get with Academy Erector, right. but we also have zero Planeswalkers we want to get with Arena Erector. That trumpeting Carn Sword, that's going to be interesting. Alex can easily ramp into that card. I think it's going to be really yeah. good. All of the four drop hits on this thing are insane. Oh, I missed the Tide Binder back there, so... What? Oh, yeah, okay, you did, yeah, yeah. Patrick picked it up as a card that I was talking about earlier, and I, I think Patrick's deck yeah. could use the two-drop Lavinia. All right, does not come up. Enters the battlefield, counter. Okay, oh, yeah, this one. This is the... Yeah, this card's good. Yeah, you stuff... You, yeah, you, stifle. You, you stifle uh, an act, a triggered or activated ability, so you can get planeswalkers, anything. But it, can, it doesn't have to actually resolve that trigger to turn something off, right? If an ability, this is this. Uh, oh yeah, sorry. Okay, you ha yeah. Okay, yeah. it has to trigger it, so then it turns it off for the rest of the game. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Expressive. Duration going a little bit late. That's but uh, you know it's a good pick there. Yep. D Dan's honed in on a strategy, and uh, I'm guessing just from his experience and skill, this is a strategy he's going to be very capable of playing well. Uh, I think he's going to be very good at knowing what to counter and what not to counter. And, well, we also have a lot of soft permission in Remand and Miscalc mm -hmm. days, so we got to be kind of we got to be uh, explicit in what we want to do. Although the Mana Drain looks better and better as we get towards Kiki Cheeky, Ooh. that's what we're gonna do with our Mana. I don't love the Natural Order here, but we'll see. So we are gonna order into Trumpeting. No, oh. it gets Green Creatures. So we're gonna order into Outland Liberator Requesting Beast right now. I mean, eventually, probably, uh, uh, like a crater hoof or something. Crater hoof, yeah. Nice astral lab there. I like that. Okay. But again, where we're at with Adam's deck is the too many cooks. Like, well, I'm not seeing outside of one or two cards. I'm not seeing what he wants to board here. And astral lab is another one. It does great stuff. It's a good, mm -hmm. but it doesn't. Like, it's better with the tinker. Um, it does great stuff, but I don't know if it really adds too much to his deck. He doesn't have a third color, so the filtering is not going to matter too much. Um, like, I don't actually, I changed that back. I don't love this pick. Well, yeah, um, what are you going to do with this? Right. Like, he's got enough main deck other stuff. Uh, I don't think it's great. Into the North doesn't care about the number of snow permanents, right? No, it's just get a, go get a snow land. Okay. Um, and you go get Dark Depths and call it a day. All right. right. Um, is there anything that would care about the number of snow permanents you control that Adam could draft? I don't no, think so. Not really, no. I mean, yeah. uh, a card that, again, I don't think it's going to be just because he's got so many main decks, but a card I do think is slept on a little bit, uh, I like a lot in these artifact decks, is this one. Quite oh, good. Artificer class. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if it's right for his, but I, I do think it's good. And they also play... It's funny because the class cards play really well with Zerda because they are activated abilities. Oh, yeah. That's true. All right. So we got the Shivan Reef. Nice. Yeah. Ashat Dream Render. Good. Good card there. That is the three drop from yeah. well, Theros? That is... The, no, that is the... This is the War of the Spark one. Okay. So it just turns off searching your opponent's libraries, and then you can mill them a little bit if you want. Yeah. Okay. Mills and Exiles. Yep. Oh, it's that's right. Yeah. Exiles Graveyards. So Goblin Shrine goes... You know, on the comeback, I'm less hateful of the Appraiser pick. If he can do, like, land, soul ring, turn two, land, Appraiser, he leaves yep. turn two with a three, two, and one of his powerful three drops. I don't love it, but I don't hate it. Like No, it just means you have to fill your... Th your three drop slot because right. it only discovers three. Right. So you're well, not looking that deep. It's three or less though. So that's the problem with it, right? Is okay, so he can hit his good stuff, but he's probably you know, also he could hit his red elemental blast, or he could hit his lightning bolt when he doesn't want to. Uh yeah, yeah. You know, so that's part of the problem. Or the Rakdos charm, right? Like that's part of the problem with a card like that. Yep. Now he now that's he can choose not to cast it and draw, because that's why he discovers slightly better than you know, Cascade. It's what well, I don't want to cast it. I just draw a card. I just draw put it in my hand. Correct. Yeah, that's why I would like something that goes and discovers like four or five because I I would rather fill my deck with 
premium three drops, not glut it, and then let my four drops kind of take over. Because we have I, right. Shieldred. I don't hate this card. Though this card again doesn't have haste. He's got the problem is he's got a lot of guys that I like hypothetically, but I don't know. Like this guy again can do. It's he's got a lot of this velocity going on, right? Like I'm gonna if I do damage, I'm gonna exile cards and I can cast that, and that's powerful. But mm -hmm. like I don't know if it's enough. Like I like this card in theory. I don't like this card enough to ever pull the trigger on it. Yep, we have impact tremors. From Kevin, which basically says we're going to be playing a lot of creatures. And I just don't. Uh, I do love the Prismari Command. It is pro one of the. It is the best uh, anti thorical combo card in the format. <laughs> so Prismari Command. One of the modes is draw discard. The other is no, it's target make a treasure. It's target player draws two and discards, discards two. Yeah. So yep. when they when they're thoracling, you in response to the trigger, you make them draw. Yep, it's just like um, Thought Scour or right. Endurance. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so often it also does damage and destroys artifacts, right? So it makes yeah. a token, destroys an artifact. It's one of the, it's a great card. I love it. Uh, I've drafted super it quite a bit. Right. It, it always does something. Mm -hmm. I'm never sad to see it in my hand, right? Uh, I do like the Revoker. Uh, and that also... Uh, unmatched, good. good. That's all. We can pull Josh fixing his lands up a little bit there. Right, I'm going to grab another slice of pizza real quick. All right, sounds good. All right, Talak Abik <sighs> from Adam coming out. Just a solid counter spell. When you have enough artifacts. I think it's a hard counter. I just need to double check this. Yep, counter Well, not. It's a, it's a loose mono leak. Counter target spell unless its controller pays three, but it has improvised costs two and a blue. So more often than not, it's just going to cost blue, and it'll be the best four spike you've ever seen. At worst, it'll be the loosest model leak you've ever seen. Okay, like Steven said, coming out of Alex, uh, we have Natural Order into Craterhoof, which is a fantastic option. Um, Craterhoof is, is eminently castable on this list. It's better than uh, World Spy and Worm, because if you're not blue with Flash, you're not going to be really able to take advantage of all of World Spy and Worm getting to, like, 13 mana or whatever. It is a very difficult ask when you're not in... A monocolor deck where you don't have the artifacts to power it out. All and right. then Mystic Confluence from Dan. Basically, just to round it out, I think Con Dan might have hit a critical mass of uh, blue soup spells. Right. Dan might be in the same spot kind of the, that uh, Adam is here. Uh, but you can easily always... That's the thing with the counters, is I can always just sideboard some counters into the matches I want. So, Mark came Well, Confluence earlier. draws cards, so... Dude, Confluence is a beating. Like, it also bounces dudes. Like, that's yep. the... Uh, Mark came in earlier, and I realized I'd passed up the beautiful beer. But this is St. Lotus, our unofficial sponsor of St. Lotus uh, VRD. It's Budweiser because it is St. Lotus. And also, today is a difference when new. Because normally we have our pizza, the point of source, our giant pizza. They normally bring it in and show it. It's like the biggest delivery pizza in the U.S. We have delicious St. Louis specials, the toasted ravioli. St. Louis has many amazing restaurants. But w globally, what we're known for is some of the worst food in the world. But uh, <laughs> don't let that turn you off by our crappy pizza that I happen to love and our, our weird raviolis. Come out, eat the barbecue, eat the delicious stuff. There's amazing restaurants. Yep. Just don't eat the things we're famous for. The pizza's not bad, I gotta say. Do we have an interview for this, or are, are, you, are we just soapboxing? I think we're just soapboxing because people are eating. Okay, that, that's perfectly fine. So we saw Alex take Crater Hoof right after Natural Order, like you suggested. That's what we would want to see. Yeah. And uh, like I was saying before I don't like you sat down. I don't like either of them in his deck. Um, but, you know, sometimes the hoof will just win you a game, you know. I think I think the hoof has a little bit of a reach, but we can definitely fill out the list with some monodorks to help us get there. I think the only other option after natural order for him would have been, I mean, prime time is still in play if we wanted to look at that. But then there's world spine worm, and I do not like I do not like uh, natural order into world spine worm. I'd rather see Josh take flash at world spine worm. I lied. We because, do have it. We do have an interview. Okay. Um, because Flash and Atraxa is also you're gonna very do this powerful. One. I'm going to go out and socialize and eat my right. pizza. So I'm gonna I remember to hide chat. All right, I'm going to add... Uh, oh, let me hide chat. Thank you. You know what I got with me? Uh, yeah, Swifty. Swifty. Oh, boy. One second. Let me get chat properly hidden here. <laughs> 
Uh, without Mr. Wizard, it's hard to run the scenes. Yeah. All right. Got it. Okay. All right. All right, sir. Slide in front of the camera. Peter's going to talk to you. Sounds good. How's it going, Peter? Uh, not too bad. Swifty, how you doing? I'm doing all right. Yeah. So uh, you're on Mardu today, not Mardon't? Yeah, basically. Mostly black-white, just a, you know, a little hint of red. We'll see how much more. We weren't sure at the beginning. Steven uh, was pretty sure you were going to end up in uh, Mardu. I wasn't sure if you would end up with more of like a dead guy Al kind of theme. Uh, yeah, just mostly the black-white disruption. I've got a few more. The nice thing about black and white is it has a lot of just the nice sideboard cards I like, so... Red just gives a little bit more access, especially mm -hmm. with, like, artifact removal. Yep. And that makes sense. Um, we weren't, like, when you pulled the trigger on Karn after we saw Ancient Tomb go, I wasn't sure if you would float uh, Lattice even further down or take it at all, because getting a six is difficult without one or both soul, soul lands. Uh, so, yeah. Do you think you're going to, like, are, is City of Traders in your wheelhouse for, for the event? It is. I... Okay. Doesn't look like a lot of people are going for it. The thing is, I don't, I don't have too many color uh, pips except for like some double black cards. Yep. But uh, and then the nice thing is, City of Traders helps like get uh, you know white plume on turn one potentially mm -hmm. with the Mox Diamond. Yep. And all the few four drops I have. So. Yeah. Uh, so Comet was taken by Alex. <laughs> Yes, was that, a, that was literally the next r round after Fourth Theodolingus was the plan. Yep. So that, it, it was sad to lose, but oh well. Yep, that's that's kind of the way Steven, uh, Steven saw it, was you invoked Fourth Theodolingus, so the only proper response yeah. was for somebody else to pull a comment. Yeah, Alec, Alex and I were talking at the table. He was like, yeah, Fourth was my next pick, so as soon as you picked Fourth, I had to take comment. Okay, got it. So you guys, you weren't quite stepping on each other's toes, but when it comes to cards like that, there's definitely yeah, a look. We yeah, have, we have a little bit of overlap there, but otherwise, yep. yeah. I'm kind of in my own lane. Yep. And then uh, we have Dovin Hand of Control, which is a card that Steven very much likes, but chat wants to know why you've betrayed your people like this. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I've drafted Dovin plenty. It's It taxes the opponent, not you. <laughs> Uh, look, uh, you're not wrong about that. Uh, this is just a question from chat. I'm chat. I go ahead. I was gonna say chat doesn't know. I love Dovin, so I'm with Steven on that. All right, usually we see it in like the banned planeswalker list, um, and so I was kind of curious to see where we were going to go after we drafted this. Um, then we hit a Johnny, so we've got like some planeswalker control in front of us. Uh, Steven mentioned from Cabal Therapy, we have options like Lingering Souls. One of the cards that I was curious about was Arena Rector. Is uh, that on anywhere uh, on the radar? Uh, Arena Rector is a possibility. We'll see how many Planeswalkers I play. Uh, mm -hmm. But Lingering Souls, um, what's the other one? Young Peasy, because it's just yep. nice. So those are cards that are... I've been building my deck as I go in Moxfield, so there's only a few main deck. There's like three or four main deck slots left. Yep. So okay. It all, it all depends just how certain things shake out and what kind of cards I want main deck against the field. Because yeah. now there's, like, this red deck I need... I think I need a little bit more action against, which is why I went with a Johnny, since, you know, Lightning Helix on a stick is yeah. nice, but also, you know, he's great against the control decks. Yeah. Uh, is Deluge just Del a bridge too far with a life payment? No, Deluge, okay. Deluge is on the list. It's probably it's not going to be main deck in this field, but it's one of the sideboard sure. cards I'm considering. Okay. Um, and then you float. It, to us, it seemed like you floated uh, Season Dungeoneer and Darkrit maybe a little too long. Were those pulled uh, out from underneath you or Darkrit? I wasn't. I, okay. I yes, Darkrit's nice. I don't care about it that much in the fair decks personally. Okay. Uh, season Dungeoneer, yes, that was that was a, pulled out from you. Yeah. I would have loved it, but say lovey. Got it. Yeah, when, when I saw uh, Fourth Yearling is coming out after Mind Twist and noting that Dark Red had been floated, what seemed like a little too long in the draft, I thought that would have been like immediately on your radar as a pickup to power out an early Mind Twist or an early Fourth and start the, um, the Monarchy, you know? That's that's a fair point that I hadn't considered with those X spells, but yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I guess really the last question I have is there's a lot of opportunity for people to play helm combo in this field there is isn't there i've yep. no and go ahead yeah go ahead with where you were going with it 
Okay, so we noted that Voidwalker hadn't picked up for a while, and we thought it would most likely end up with you, and now as kind of like the Orzov plus player, you have the opportunity to also play Rest in Peace alongside Leyline, and then just with Karn, play Helm main or side. Is this package floating around anywhere, or do you think you're just going to let the Helm go? I'm considering it. I'm not... I don't have any tutors right now, so like two card com two card Monty combos are kind of mm -hmm. iffy. It's like, well, if I draw a helm with nothing else to do with it, then it's kind of a dead card. Yep, which which makes sense. That's why we weren't sure if you would kind of lean in um, because what is it? Um, Dothy is such a powerful card on its own. Mm -hmm. You don't need to to place the combo around it. Uh, Planar Void is also another option. Like You have all these options to exile the graveyard, but only one option to just cack the library. So we weren't sure if you would just take some of the good cards that just play normally in, in the 40 really well and maybe lean into Helm or not. Um, but that's good to know. And then the last question I have is overall, finally, if there's one card you want to get between now and the end of the draft, what would it be? Uh, I'm at this point. I'm not super scared about losing the card. I super plan to grab is uh, fracture. It's just a nice sideboard card against a ton of the field. It hits artifacts. It hits uh, the planeswalker deck super easily. Yep. So that's a that's a card I'm really looking to get. But I'm not at this point. I'm not worried about any of my stuff going. Okay, do you think your lane's pretty clear then? At this point, yeah. I think everything that would have been fought over with me has been taken. Yep. All right, that, that works for me. I think I saw Steven Fortnite dancing in the background. He was, yeah. All right, so if you want to send him... Do you want to see behind you? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks Thanks for the interview, right. Peter. Get no problem. Thanks for coming, Swifty. <sighs> All right. I'm back. Mason's not angry at you for hyping up Dovin. He's angry at you for hyping him up so much you had a Fortnite dance over it. You know what? I'm going to just, uh, you know, I, I, I've never actually played a game of Fortnite in my life. Uh, never, at least he didn't dwap a Gwitty on us. I don't even know what that, I don't even know what that is, man. I'm 46 years old. That is like, you're speaking to don't another you have language. Kids? Yeah, like 11. Uh, I don't know that one. So maybe she's not into that one. She's into Doctor Who and Pokemon and uh, a lot of geeky shit. So like and Taylor Swift though. She does like her mm -hmm. most music to listen to is Taylor Swift and Olivia Rodrigo. So like I'm I'm pretty sure the majority of people on the planet align with her tastes. Yeah. So like we oh, there we go. Mark's four year old was teaching his one year old how to hit the gwitty. There we go. <laughs> right. Yeah. So. Yeah, some things I'm, uh, I mean, she probably knows what it is, but it's not something that I, I know what it is, so. Uh, if anybody cares and they're a fan of just Gritty as a mascot, you can actually find a video of Gritty dwapping a Gwitty on the White House lawn <laughs> a year or two ago at Easter, and nobody was impressed. I'm just a fan of Marx's Gritty. I don't care about the rest of it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a boomer. I'm a Gen Xer. <laughs> you leave me be. I'm a fringe Gen Xer slash, I'm like, I'm on the cusp. I'm a cusper. Yeah, but, you're a cusper. But I grew up, but with the parents I grew up with and the world that people I hung out with, though I'm officially a cusper, I am much more aligned with Gen X in attitude and ideology than I do uh, millennials. Did you have a grunge or, phase? Oh, God, dude. I mean, like, no, like, like, grunge was absolutely the most instrumental shit to my, like, my, um, like, Kurt Cobain's death, like, I mean, true story, sad as hell, like, this is depressing, you know, let's let's get into a VRD depression here. Uh, my best friend was one of the biggest Nirvana fans in the world, and I don't think Kurt Cobain's death caused him to commit suicide, it was other things, but I don't think Kurt Cobain's death helped him not commit suicide. Got and, it. like, a week after Kurt Cobain killed himself, my best friend killed himself, and it was other things related, uh, but I definitely don't think uh, Cobain's death helped the cause, helped right? The cause, so... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> No, so yeah, no, no. Uh, Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, uh, Nirvana, like, you know, 19, 1989 to 1993, those are my uh, instrumental years of my musical life. So, All right. uh, 
<laughs> We're just getting real for a moment. Yeah, just getting real. Like... And we got Brotherhood in, so now I can get unreal and I can talk about the end of Brotherhood. Uh, what is Miglaz? 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 I don't know. It's not showing up on my image thing here. Oh, is this from not... uh, one? Oh, so okay. yeah. It was just he just had it typoed, so it wasn't showing up right. Uh, Let's see. Miglaz the Maze Crusher. This guy's one of those oil ones that gets big. Mm -hmm. It gains plus two, plus two. Remove, destroy. Okay, so it can become a 6-6 six, six here and there. Right, so you can remove an oil counter and give it Vigilance and Menace. Not bad. Um, remove an oil counter, make it bigger. Remove three oil counters. and just, Okay, it's flexible. It's interesting. Yeah. I don't love it, but it's not bad. I do like the tracker out of Josh here, though, with the... I uh, because uh, he's got the, um, I love Tracker and uh, Tolarian Academy. So I'm a massive Tracker, Oko, Tolarian Academy fan. I mean, and, don't forget Fast Bond. The package is here. Right. He just needs the draw sevens. Like, right. this is everything. This is the setup for all the draw sevens. He's got the, he's got the gush, right? Uh, Windfall would be good for him. Uh, here's the Osier I mentioned earlier for yep. uh, that Kevin was probably going to draft. This is uh, the over damage one. Yeah. See if this comes up. It does not come up. So yeah, this one is the if a red source you control would deal amount of non-combat damage less than Osher's power to an opponent, that source uh, is doubled. Deals or, damage no, equal to Osher's, Osher's power. power. Okay. Yep. So and then it flips into something else. So uh, usually a land. Um, yeah, it's yep. a land of something. Taps for red, or it has an activated ability. Two and a single red. Transform, Temple of Power. Activate only if red sorcery <laughs> you control dealt four or more non-combat damage this turn. It flips Only back. as a sorcery. Right, it mm -hmm. flips back. Uh, Winds of Abandon. I've talked about wins with other people before, and they've talked me off this cliff. I've thought about it, be, it whether it's good or not. Um, issue, I think he's got enough removal, right? Like, I don't think he needs more removal right now. Um, no, at this point in time with Dress Down, I'd actually... I, I love Dress Down, though. Morris, Dressdown is a board card. I love. Yeah, but if we play Luris, it could be a main deck card. Right. Um, I did talk to Adam a little outside. He has realized, he brought it up to me. I didn't bring it up to him. He has realized that he has not really have a board, that he's overdrafted his main. And mm -hmm. uh, he's got a couple cards. I uh, love the Deluge from Swifty there. Uh, that's really solid. The Young Pyro, yep. um, that's solid. That's nothing wrong Th with it. Those are both cards that he and I talked about. Yeah. Uh, Spiteful Visions, very Kevin y card. Oh, nice. <laughs> Tangle Wire. We can't play opposition, but we sure can play Tangle Wire to slow our opponents down. Well, and that is for sure. Now let's let's ask the question here, and this is my question for you then, right? So he's got Tangle Wire, he's yep. got uh, Lodestone. Mm -hmm. That's that's not enough to run a uh, uh, workshop, is it? No, that's not enough. No, because you only have those. You have to. Okay. We have how many picks left? 11? Yeah. No, it's not enough. I thought he had more artifacts, but he doesn't. No, you got to lean in real hard. Real yeah. hard. So, Matt with the mana confluence, just to shore up the Grixis mana base. Yeah. What I wouldn't, we have. I wouldn't be surprised if he grabs City of Brass here, too, just to go with it. If we need that many untapped sources, for sure. Um, not Xander. I'm not Xander's really, Lounge is still available. I'm not willing to run over one tap source. Like, I've done it a couple times, and I've always regretted it. Like, in, you're okay. running any more than a single tap source. Like, some of the ones that you think are somewhat untapped sources, like the uh, the blue, like the fast lands, or the ones that, uh, if you have two, like, they never come in. Like, Tango lands. Right. When, yeah. I, when I need them, they're still never. They're, I, they never come in right when I need them. Right. Like, that's yeah, I, I'd probably want Dark Slick Shores and... Um, yeah, the fast lands over. Yeah, I don't know. I think we're set up pretty well for colors from that side of things. I really wouldn't expect too much. If we had more than one fetch land, if we sorry, we have Tarn and Meyer, so I would still want to say fetch stay fetchable. If we had another one or two, then I would think the Grixis Trion would be decent because you could fetch it on turn one when you're not doing a whole lot. But yeah, it makes their City of Brass exactly like you called, so that makes sense. Yeah. Did Adam mention? course correcting in regards to starting to build a board uh we didn't talk about it into too in depth but he was just talking about like you know he he's realized a couple of the things that uh like he he rejects the, he, re, he regrets the zerta pick uh because he has the saga um so he had yeah. he had intention of uh 
not, he doesn't want to run a main deck. So, yep. uh, so he regrets the Zerta pick, especially that early. So, guy, okay. there, yeah. there's a green sun, Mason. There we go. Chain Lightning and Pyroclasm from Dan. So right. we're just kind of building good. out like our removal suite yeah. now, so we can live to turn four. Yeah, I mean, those can be main. Those can be board. Love the Cindervines <laughs> pick. That card is so good. Probably undervalued a little bit. Um, yeah, I think if I'm Alex, I still need like. I feel good. okay, but I'm not comfortable about the amount of ramp creatures I have. Yeah, it's a good board card here, though. I mean, Are, and we're still floating Taiga. People yeah. know this, right? I don't know. Maybe they've missed it. Oh boy, that's going to be really funny if at the end of the draft Alex realizes that he left Taiga on the table. Yeah, Taiga is the girl I never had. I want to get to know her better. <sighs> Man, I wonder who's going to end up with Luris because you got at this point like. Andrew, I think, is off of Luris. Swifty is off of Luris because of a Johnny Vengeance. Right. Kevin is now off of I Luris. Mean, the thing is, is out of all of them, Luris is the most main deckable, right? Because it's still just yep. a three-two life link that immediately like gets you value stuff. Like Luris is easily the most main deckable out of all the companions. Yep. Um, I, aside from, uh, so I think both. No, Kevin has multiple four drops. Patrick only has the one ring. Oh no, there's solitude and subtlety in the list as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you can't just slot Luris into Patrick's list. You would have to take out some of your more powerful free spells. Right. Or your only free spells to get Luris in if you wanted to companion it. But I I think if I was Patrick and I'm thinking about Luris, I'd probably snap that off sooner rather than later. Top missing cards were still Wheel out, still Taiga out. Still mm -hmm. got Crucible, Luris, Question Jared, Painter's Combo, GTA still out there. City of Traders is gone. Uh, Yes, Swifty and I talked about City of Traders. Actually, he says okay. he believes nobody else in the draft is really looking for Soul Land, so okay. it is on his radar. He's just floating it. Bone Crusher is gone. Um... But I also got the the feeling from Swifty that he wouldn't be remiss if it was taken out from underneath him. Right. Gta seems like a hard ask in this outside of Patrick's list, but then you have to like really craft this list to take advantage of Gta. It seems like you want to spend all your mana on spells right now for both Mentor and right. Uh, their Iconoclast Palace and equipping. Palace Jailer, Archon of Emeria, and Nisa all seem really good. No. Yep, Palace Jailer and Archon could fit into Swifty's list or for Patrick, sure, or Patrick, uh, or Patrick's. Ezra the Seeker is still out there, which goes it's a it's a second key and a tutor for yeah. Adam. Yeah, I think Adam probably needs to look at some remove oh Karn Pants. So again, I'm not like he's got a powerful shell, but I just don't know I don't like the Karn Pants pick here. I love Karn Pants. I think it's a good card. Um but I think he needed some yep. sideboard options at this point. Okay, so there's Exhum from Matt, and I wonder if Matt is not familiar with all the reanimation spells that are out there. Eh, maybe. Exhum doesn't target your opponent's graveyards. I believe Dance does. Right. Right. No, Exhum is each player. You just you get something. Exhum oh, just... oh, yeah, no, no. I'm familiar with that one. Yeah. Um, Skydiver yeah, okay. solid. Yeah, so the reason I say that is, is specifically because Dance and Necromancy still pull from your opponent's graveyards. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so Swifty with the boil... Uh, I've drafted Boyle. I, I've regretted drafting Boyle. Um, I've drafted Boyle in this list that Swifty's drafting, basically. And okay. I regretted drafting it. Uh, it just simply doesn't end up being enough. I got made fun of it in Chicago for drafting it. And it's funny enough, they, he, Swifty just turned around and drafted it here. So. You got to. It costs four. You got to drop it on like three it's reliably, I think. It, it's an instant. I mean, that's there, there's a couple lists that's pretty solid against here. I mean, there is Dan's list with the triple blue stuff, but it's got to resolve. So the fact that it's an Here's instant, though, can. can like if they if they at the end he goes to flash in like a uh, deceiver X arc and taps out to do that because he's gonna drop a twin on it next turn <laughs> you know you could boil in response it's pretty funny for sure I think that and like I think that's the kind of the ceiling on this card unless you're playing against Adam and you can get it underneath yeah a lot of what Adam's trying to do no for sure <clears throat> all right so we got some little bit of lands here like, yep. Sacred Black Leaf Cliffs, perfectly fine for Kevin. Mm -hmm. uh, have we seen Blood Crypt go yet? Yeah, he took that way early. Way early? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there is Badlands, Mesa, Blood Crypt. Yeah, he okay. took that way early. Good, good, good. There's the Foundry. 
Platt's gone. Had, yep. No, I know that. I'm just thinking yeah. about how much I like the um, the Boros line in Patrick's list. Yeah, I mean, he needs to be able to cast a few things. I think, you know, does he have... What fetches does he have? With him? He doesn't have any fetches, so I think that... The... He, has a, he has one strand and hollowed fountain. Oh, he's got the strand. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I think I think that's important, actually. I think the duel, the Boros land, is good there, because... And I believe it's Rogren Triome yeah, already. He's, he's got a lot of colors, and, you know, being able to consistently hit it. Yep. Unex- but it's just when you're building your Jeskai list, the last thing you want in your mana base is the Boros land. It is almost always the wrong choice. But Steam Vents is gone, and Shivan Reef is gone. Right. And you have a Triome, so Lo- I don't think Lorien Revealed can cycle to get a dual land that enters the battlefield untapped there's the snow duels i know that much you could get the blue white one with lorian revealed if you really yeah. wanted to all right no land meltdown there's the ramming up in josh's list i like would have liked the crucible in josh's list over the ramming up there's the imperial good the seal i mean that could be an option to take from alex and take crucible all on right. the backswing you all uh because Alex has GSZ, so right. you probably don't want Adam to be able to get to tune up that aspect. Right. Shifting Ceteratops. Solid sideboardy beater. I think there's better ones, but I don't think it's horrible by any stretch. If it costs four, I think it's good. If it costs five, then no, it's, it's competing four. with Argaroth. Yeah, okay, yeah, good. It's four. Um, it is a lot. It, it's an interesting card. It can be countered. It's got the pro blue. It's a sideboard card. and There's a Cast of Fire, great sideboard card there. Yep, 100%. Uh, yeah, I like the Ceratops. I think there's other just really good sideboard cards in that same spot, but like, yeah. there's nothing wrong with that pick. No, the fact that you can give it haste, I think, is also really important. Yeah, the card was a beater when it was in standard. Yep, yeah, but that's what I was thinking. Is like the its slot in the sideboard competes with Gargaroth. Yeah, I mean, it is five if you want to give it haste. Effectively, that's what. You hey, think about. there's the Taiga. <laughs> it was not forgotten, or it was and then remembered. Yeah, I I the I think the only other reason I would like to have seen Gargaroth or either in that spot or before the end of the draft is because we have natural order in the main. Right. And we need something else to do with natural order besides Crater Huff. Right now, we're getting, like, nothing spectacular. Right. That's a late seat. But no one else, no one else is really playing the artifact party, so... Nope. So you kind of have free reign over yeah, all, the, all of your artifact lands. Yeah. So 26 is the normal for seat. Highest it's gone looks like 11. Yeesh. No, 10. That's very high. 10, so. A little more of a tutor package and flexibility for Dan and Muddle the Mixture, right? Because it's a counter spell up top. Otherwise, it transmutes for a 2 or transmutes for 3? Transmutes to 2. Okay. So I don't know what he's transmuting to unless it's coming down the board. Like, is there anything? EE. Um, you got... You have... Yeah, I mean, Snapcaster. Some counters. No. Yeah. Not a whole lot, I think, is the end of the day what we're looking at with that. But it's yeah. it, the flex is nice. A pathway. So this is I love the, the flip land, right? Yeah, this is the flips. Is it blue-black? Or is it... Blue-red. Okay. Man, Dr. Pee Pee Poo Poo. If I had to guess who's winning, I think it's Alex. Or Swifty. I think they have the most straightforward lists. If I have to guess who's winning, it's our loyal fans in the audience that are getting to hear this amazing commentary from Peter and I. And uh, hang out and have a good time. That's who's winning. There is a link to the sheet, but I believe it is going to VRD10. So the link I just posted in chat, we'll get you there. All right. Um. We are off. I need to go back to draft. There we go. All right, cool. We did fix the link. Awesome. Link is fixed. And all right, so we got a tree speaker, a little bit of mana ramp there. That's not bad in that list. No, right. especially with the fast font. You can get out ahead and, right. and Dr. pump someone into it. That is a Dr. Pee Pee Poo Poo lover. He is a lover of the tree speaker. It's, it's a very good card. Josh has the opportunity to just go time spiral, sail to the west, upheaval, and laugh. And he, then but with his vintage Yeah, he's gonna get spiral. I don't know what he's going to though. It's like, kinda of, it's into like I said, the list is interesting. It is. It really, really is. I 
I, I still would I still stand by. I would have loved to have seen the black splash in there to get the uh, the decay package stuff and Leovold and um, something. Be able to deal with their stuff. Yeah, we're well past that. Oh, with, um... yeah. No, 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 we're not going to see at this point. Lingering Souls, as I mentioned earlier, so. It's almost like we know what we're doing, Peter. Swiss <laughs> Spear, you mentioned that one earlier. and uh, I, I said I didn't think we were in territory because we don't have enough spells. And I agree with you, and I agreed with you, and I still think that we were right on that. So I don't think that one's the right pick. I do like the Poppet Stitcher, though. This card, I had this to pretty good success and actually probably picked it about the same round uh it's gonna only be one picked i'm guessing so let's find out is uh, it the flip card yeah it was picked in 34 last time by me this time it's picked in 38 so yeah so it uh when you cast an insert sorcery it creates a zombie with decayed to begin your upkeep if you control three or more token creatures you may transform it mm-hmm. and then when it's transformed all of your tokens become three threes with uh no abilities okay that card seems amazing until you remember you have Monastery Mentor in your list. Right. You lose the abilities, but you're making still a lot of 3-3s, three you know. I agree. Wait, is it a May on the flip? Uh, You may. Okay. Yeah, and you can okay. choose to or not to, yeah. Good. Uh, I... oh, and another. Ooh, I like this. He's, I like what he's doing here. I don't know how much he's going to do be able to get all, but uh, I mentioned this card earlier. This card's yep. really good. <laughs> So you uh, uncrank all your tokens, right? Yeah. At the beginning? Well, and they get bigger at the beginning of the end step. And yeah. just but up, just the 2-2 two, two instant speed vigilance knight is often really good. Oh, for sure, for sure. Uh, the, the reason I like Virtue of Loyalty as a commander card isn't the flexibility. Like, that's fantastic. I think a lot of people underestimate uncranking all your creatures every turn if you have yeah. something to do with them. This is VRD, so we're not going to be playing, like... Um, What's that card from Shadows over Innistrad, Innistrad that turns all your token or all your creatures into monodorks? Yeah, like Cryptal of Rights. Cryptal of Rights, yeah. We're not going to be doing something like that. We're not going to be... Um, right. Opposition. Oppos- we could opposition, but like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not. Yes, we could. We absolutely could. We ha- We are in the colors. We have the tokens. Um, I just don't think it's something we're going to do. If you're... So Kevin it has a lot of cards that ask you to do non-combat damage, mm-hmm. and so we have Bowmasters, so Bolt, I, Eidolon. I expect Kevin to draft some sort. So I think this is where we're going to see that transitionary thing, right? He's going to have like, I've got this bigger mana Punisher list, and then I can just trans- try to do these into Swift Spear, yeah. Soul Scour Mage. I don't like it, but I think that's his thought process, right? Like. Do, yeah, I, yeah. do I have these more aggressive guys, or do I have these more big mana punisher guys? Yeah, I think Soul Scar Mage is a fine card to take early in the draft, just like Swift Spear. Mm-hmm. But at this point in the draft, you've lost so many of your cards that target creatures to put negative one, negative one counters on them that all you can really rely on is prowess at this yeah. point. So just sideboard removal there, you know, it does it does the job. Yep. Swifty said he was most worried about the red deck and the amount of re- removal that he had compared to the number of creatures. So I mm-hmm. think we're going to see a little bit of that balancing act right now. Right. And I think there's just still a ways to go for for Josh. I think we have so many more cards in front of us that we can take. I'm very curious and both and excited to see what falls out of this list. Okay, that's the four drop Venser. That's good. I mean it's an answer. Now you don't, he doesn't yeah, have Caracas. Right. Yeah. He can't abuse it, but mm-hmm. It is not abusable, but it's still just solid. Uh, you know, it's solid tempo, does the things. Yep, I'm looking to see if there's anything exciting for us to reset of our own, and it doesn't really look like it. No. Um, we're still at a spot where I don't understand how we're triggering Ledger Shredder. I think that Ledger Shredder is just one of those, like, it's a good card. I should probably get it without overly thinking about it too much. Yeah. Right, it's just like, hey, this is a quality card. Like, it's out there. I should draft it, and then yeah. More often than not, we're drawing one card a turn. If I had to draw, pick like an average, if our games last six turns, it's going to be like one point two maybe cards a turn with this list. All right, good old careful study. Just fantastic for a reanimator because we already took faithless looting. 
Right. Great thought monitor, but we're still got too many cooks. What are we going to know? How's that main deck for Adam going to pan out? It's going to be interesting. Yep. There's the cradle to help power out the crater hoof, which kind of leans back into what I'm saying of I don't feel comfortable with the number of mana creatures I have. I want like one or two more. Right. We got a snarl. Okay. Just... And we have a spelling problem. Yeah, so Sulphur Falls will be the next one when it hit when the spelling yes. problem is corrected. It's with a We got it. There we go. A lot of U's. Jet Mirror's Garden, that's the Nea Triome. Okay, I was wondering yeah. if we were going to take this or not. I think this is a list that can yeah, effectively do this. Yeah. That's fine. One tap land ain't going to hurt you there. Especially when you have mono creatures. Yeah. You, you can afford to take that that quote-unquote turn off to play a tap land. Um, I still would like to see from this mana base, what else? Or some, so we have the Tiger, we have the Savannah. We have Jet Mirror's Garden. I don't think we need Loam, but that is definitely something we can look at to help with this mana base, especially because we no longer have uh, Romunap, but Crucible is still available. Yeah. Right? You know, um, for Swifty or maybe Patrick um, or maybe Josh, Nolrod, not Nolrod, um, uh, what's the one but that it shuts, doesn't do anything? What's the one that shuts off activated abilities? We have Stony Silence. That, that's gone. No, the artifact, the uh, artifact that shuts off activated abilities. Ramping Matrix. No, it's just the uh, it's it's like no red, but it's not. It's like the small staff or whatever that. Uh, not sphere, not damping sphere, right? No, I can't. I'll, I'll think of it in a minute. Um, it does the Linvala thing, where it shuts off, like, hey, we're going to just... Uh, the Worm Coil, I like that Worm Coil. That's actually pretty solid. Like, that gives a it's, good threat. It's something to do. I'm not sure what you're, Hold on. What you're think, thinking of. Hold on. Uh, Linvala Artifact. Let's see. So, Oppo Agent for Swifty. Um, we have a bit of searching all over, so it, more often than not, you're probably just going to land the 3-2 flyer and it's just the threat which sometimes is better than yeah the i don't actual i don't like the op agent there i like op agent in decks with lots of counter spells uh and that you know can hold it up but i don't yep. love it when you're playing sorcery speed which is a lot of what he's doing mm -hmm. i do love strict proctor that someone brought up there um what is i trying to think of right why Yeah, I'm not quite sure. Light up the stage from Kevin. All right, all right. I actually like light up the stage. I think that one's solid. Crucible over there is interesting. Um... Well, again, it's it's that velocity that we're talking about. We have Patrick with a really late Crucible. You have the one fetch land, so you're probably just hoping to take it out from underneath Alex. Yeah, I don't know. There's a, I don't know what I'm thinking of. Maybe I'm a crackhead. It's possible. It is always possible that I'm smoking crack. So Matt picked up Iona, which that that's 100% a sideboard card always in the reanimation shell. You never main deck it. But it almost seems like the Thoracle combo is supposed to loom in the 75 you just don't know where this looks like a reanimator main plan with the possibility of backdooring into thoracle cursed totem that's what i'm thinking of grinning totem C cursed totem activated cursed totem. abilities of creatures can't be activated yep i think that would be interesting in a couple of these lists where that because like it could really hinder like kiki it could really hinder the uh, urza deck uh it could really hinder alex's deck um mm. there's another no, one for sure there's another one of those aggro guys for that little aggro shell he's kind of pondering. So we have Authority of the Consoles, right? That that stuff, the Kiki combo. And then we have... What is that? We talked about that vampire from Lost Caverns. Commander. Cunning. Conquistador. 
cute conquistador. What the yeah. hell is this thing? It's not gonna pop up because it's too new. It has been really cunning. Conquistador. Charismatic conquistador. Whenever an artifact or it's one and a white for a two two with vigilance, whenever an artifact or creature enters the battlefield untapped and under an opponent's control, they may tap that permanent. If they don't, you create a one one white vampire creature token with lifelink. So which is a really good stuff on the Kiki combo. Well it depends on which Kiki combo, because if they're flyers it doesn't matter. And then you're then you're mucked, yeah. Yeah, so it depends on which which part. Uh, I do like the Torpor orb there. Yep, just shut down ETBs. Just very, very solid uh, sideboard card for Andrew's list. Alex is like, I don't care. I'm putting their stomping He's ground. He's giving up the ghost on the stomping yeah. ground. Yeah, he's like, I don't care. I'm taking, no one else is taking a stomping ground. <laughs> yeah, whoever threw a Strict Proctor into the bot. I like Strict Proctor because, but I like it when, when, when the Crab's deck is around. I like it because it says permanent. So they have to pay for every Crab land. They have to sure. pay two. Um it also, of course, can be abused for your own stuff sometimes, which is interesting. Oh, but Get stuffed crabs. Yeah, get stuffed crabs. No one's crabbing here today. Unless Josh no. surprises us and backdoors into crabs. Uh, well, there's that one card from Modern Horizons 2 uh, that makes a 0-3 crab and a clue. Hidden evidence, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's actually... There's a couple of it's not bad in. I, uh, I know Mark Mark at Chicago. Mark ran at main deck, and uh, he became a fan of it. Like he he was using it to do his tinker, and yes. it, it gave him a body for something he needed, and also gave him a uh, artifact for tinkering away. So, it's a blocker. <laughs> yes. It could be run. Josh could run this card right now because yeah. it has the tinker. So it could add him. Yeah. <laughs> Crab Chain of people. paper is crab. fine. Crab look like crab. No. Yeah, look like crab tastes like people. Yeah. It, Chain um, of paper is a great sideboard card. It's just a versatile answer, right? It's cheap. Yeah, it's costs, easy. yeah exactly. I think cheap is the best part about it. It costs one. You're yeah. really hard to find a, a better card unless you're looking at vapor snag. Yeah. I mean, it's the the non-land permanent, right? It's it's not a full on boomerang, but it costs one. It hits anything, unlike say unsummon. Yeah. You know, so. What's Ooh, Lily Veil. Interesting. What's the Raven form? Is that the card from Call Time that people were going nuts over? I don't know. Probably. I literally hear for Call Call Time. Raven form. There it is. Excel. Oh yeah. So Excel. Plus three. Okay. Foretells though for nothing. Yep. But. Foretell's weird in this format because you you only have you're generally only gonna have one four foretell card. So it's like they know, like if they if I thought you had this, I'm like, okay, foretell. They're like, all right, it's your raven form. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. You can't you can't bluff it. <laughs> no, no. I I wasn't sure if it, I forgot how much foretell costs and how much the card costs without foretell. So right. Echoing Truth from Adam, that's fine. That's Yeah, that's good. I mean it's just the next best chain of vapor. Right. Uh, that, it deals with the Kiki combo in its entirety. Yeah, that's a solid board card right there. Like mm -hmm. that's a really good board card. Yep. Um, let's take a look at Alex here. What do I want to see out of Alex coming up? Uh, I mean, he showed Stomping Ground, which is perfectly fine because then it's almost a perfect mana base. After that, I think it's just Yava Maya, maybe right. Life and Crop Rot, and that's about it. Yeah, you don't need crop rot. I would like to see three lands: stomping ground, Yavamaya, and Dryad Arbor. I want to see like right now. I'm gonna say the most missing card from a couple of these decks is Palace Jailer. Um, it is crazy to me that Palace Jailer is not. Oh, out of all the cards that are missing, I think I I think that's a. I mean, like, there's stuff, agree. like, wheels, okay, wheel, whatever, right, that's one, like, uh, you know, painter combo, hit whatever, that's fine, uh, city, you can grab whenever, probably. Uh, I think I, Swifty's I, definitely going to take that, I think he's just still floating it, right. I, so I would consider that gone. Now, the question is, Adam going to just kick out of the uh, Stoneforge, right, right now he's got Stoneforge, but he doesn't have any targets. Oh, no, no, he does, he picked Batter Skull when, okay. uh, right, I, I when he got up earlier. I missed the Batter Skull, okay. okay. Um... But yeah, so like looking at these, like looking at these decks. So this isn't just like pure power I'm talking about. I'm just talking about looking at these decks, because uh, obviously there's no green black for the decay. Looking at these decks, the card that I think is most missing is Palace Jailer. Okay. Who has Breach? Like 
uh, Underworld. Yeah. Uh, the the Thoracle deck. Okay. And we can't. We have Time Walk as our power, piece of power, so we can't. We could Brain Freeze for value. Yeah. All right. Or maybe get there. We might be able to get there with Brain Freeze. I don't know. For me, I think the card the the card that's missing out of all of these, like setting aside City, we know that one's going to be chewed up. Mm-hmm. It might be Wheel of Fortune. Yeah. I think there are a few decks that could take advantage of Wheel of Fortune. Oh, there goes the City to Oh, okay. I don't think Swifty's too upset about that. Yeah, I, means... I don't think he's too upset, but it, it would have been nice to have. I mean, it does normally go around 21. That's a double. That's it, That went to 42, right? So that's yeah. doubly late City. Without Tomb, the dream of the turn one uh, White Plume was kind of right. off the table already. This just solidifies it. So what's interesting is City doesn't go every draft, right? It's 23 out of 31, usually around 21. But look, despite it doesn't go, outside of the, here's a round 45, and then one round 41, and one round yep. 34... 40, I guess now nah, there's some later ones. I was like, it's still real. As high as it's been, it's five. That's crazy. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it is definitely uh, you know that is a late city, and uh, you know it's going to happen. Alex drafted Angels Grace. You know, ain't nothing wrong with that. He's gonna. It's gonna come out on the board against uh, Thoracle, and it's Oracle. gonna be like, okay, win, go for it. You know exactly. <laughs> I. You know, it's a silver bullet, but it also can, you know, especially if you, if you can win back against Kiki, right? Yep. Like, okay, cool. You went Kiki. Boom. Angel's Grace. Like, Get you back. Yeah. And I'm going to pop you back because I have a, I'm going to th- attack with this, uh, you know, boo and then throw the boo at you, you know? Yeah. No, for sure. All right. What is Dread Fugue? It's uh, it's the cleave hand- discard. It's a sideboard discard when you want something against the control decks, right? So. Oh, uh, Okay. You can choose uh, something that costs two or less, uh, but if you pay the three, you can get any card. Got it. Yeah, so I actually like uh, Andrew Grace. I like the Domri out of the um, out of the sideboard, right? For, for the counter spells, that's actually solid. Yeah, and I can boss. Not bad. Not at all. Get a little uncountable action, a little fighty fight. Mm-hmm. For the rest of the cards that aren't uh, halfling able. Right. Right. Yeah, if you want some of that, I also an interesting uh, a card I would like to see out of him would be Bloodbraid for the main deck. Like I don't. Yeah, BB wouldn't be too bad overall. I think that is kind of an interesting conversation because there's a value rub of BBE against the number of mono dorks you have. Right. Well, I guess Some, right. I was going to say in his deck actually I don't like it because he's probably just hitting Chrome Box or Ren and Six or a mana dork, and that's just yeah. like okay, you know. I, I think. If we want, if, I think we we have the Carnosaur already to discover four or right. five. Then, if we were going to lean in, I would like to see not Quintorius Con because that discovers too little for Alex's deck. Let's see, what do we have that can be? We have an Everybody Lives sighting. That's what we have. All right. So. So instead of phasing out, we just want to live. Yeah, so this is it's also fun. just going to stop. And because there's a lot of people are like, well, why wouldn't you just run like, uh, you know, a couple of the others, like uh, the green one or whatever? But this also stops them, adds the Angel's Grace thing to it, right? Where they just can't yep. win the game. Correct, because you can still lose <laughs> under Teferi's protection. So the Scalding Viper, that one's funny. There's the, there, it wasn't the new, that was the, that was the new one, that, uh, the new Eidolon. He's just like, I don't oh, care about, okay. I don't care about the blue half. I'm just running this for the Eidolon. Uh, yeah, love the Maddening Hex. Powerful, powerful, powerful Haterade card. Yep. So there's a card. So we talked about Domri and Ark of Bolas, and we were we were talking about Blood Braid Elf with Cascade. There's a card that solves both of these problems with Discover Five, and it's Chimmel, the Inner Sun. It costs six. Oh, legendary the, artifact can't be countered. <laughs> yep. Spells you control can't be countered at the beginning of your end step. Discover Five. Yeah. So it's not only halflingable. Nice. You, you will also get to discover every turn, which oh. kind of solves that problem. Upheaval oh, sighting. Oh, I was right with, with what Josh is doing. I yeah. said, I called the upheaval. I said, we're at a spot now where we need to start thinking about the the draw sixes and maybe upheaval. Yeah. 
Canker Bloom, just... very good sideboard card for Canker Bloom. 100%. Ghostly Prison's good sideboard, like bring, coming against Kevin when he's attacking, you know, so mm -hmm. it's a couple of these. There's not a ton of artifact. Good cage. Nothing wrong yep, with it. Because Matt's still showing as if he wants to be reanimating Thoracle. Right, and also stops the, uh, like, uh, the um, natural order. Yep. But it, what, it, we're natural ordering for Crater Huff, like whoop-de-poop. Right. Uh, I don't know if I like the Canker Bloom over... I mean, it's a 3-2 at least, which is aggressive, and it can do some other yeah. things. But I do, because uh, uh, the, the bug is just so good. Because it exiles and gains you life. Oh, uh, um... Might. Haywire might. Might. Yeah. yeah. So you said the bug, and my first thought was the uh, 40k oh. Tyranid that exiles graveyards. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so we got no no green, black, so no, we're gonna, no grist, no trophies, nothing like that. I don't think anyone's grabbing Scepter here that uh, the doctor's talking about. Isochron? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Dan and Patrick both have two spots they can put into uh, Scepter and Boomerang, if you really yeah. want to be that person. Scepter chant. Yeah. There's the stomp. Oh, yeah, you around. can chant as well. Ingenious Smith. Does that yeah. go get, does it get equipment or artifacts? Uh, here's about a look at the top four cards. You may reveal an artifact. Okay. All right, so we are on the home stretch, folks. So uh, t today, um, so again, this is St. Louis 13. I'm Stephen Hagen. I am Peter Kritzberger. And uh, we're wrapping up the draft portion here. We'll do a little debrief talking about the drafts. Probably have one quick small interview. Uh, this year, we're, or this net year, this time we're going to do something different. We're trying out something a little new. Rather than streaming the games, we are going to record choice games so rather than doing a constant stream where we're worried about constantly moving people in and out and trying to stop downtime uh we're going to record matches and just post them up on youtube so we're not going to have game stream today um we're going to see how this goes over see what people like see how we like it and then you know kind of build going from there so we're just looking at ways to kind of make our our life easier around here uh you know mark was up last night getting everything together and setting everything up and this is just a lot of work uh, so, uh, on top of the money he spends, etc. Uh, so we're going to try this out this year. So, uh, at the end of this, uh, let us know, we are going to do one more interview. Let us know who you want to talk to. And then, uh, we are going to, uh, go on pause and we will, uh, be around and either my, myself and Peter or myself and Mark, uh, I know Peter has to go at some point today or myself, we will be commentating games as we stream them. Uh, and, and, but we are going to put them on YouTube up rather than just streaming them live today. So we will not have a live game stream uh, today. So, all right. Uh, Fracture, I know, uh, he had mentioned that in the interview. Yes. Uh, defense grid is a good one. One Swifty might have liked for his board, but not necessary, right? Like the car, it's a good card board target, but you know, yep. it's not the end of the world. Um, um, skull crack is really only good for the one ring and batter skull right now. I, there's still this again value rub of I want to deal damage to creatures and spells that only deal damage to players, right? In Kevin's list, but again, we're running short on those spells because we let them go early, right? The little prowess guy. I would rather have Balmor captain than him, because Balmor pumps my other tokens. Okay. And gives them flying. So, I mean, Kira's cute. I mean, the backside of Kira's good, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, so, let's see. Uh, which one is Spell Spear? K-E-R-E-A. How do you spell this crap? Kenra, not Kira. Kenra. Not Kim. Ken. Can I type? Am I okay? Uh, I'm just so, letting you go because watching you descend into madness is. No, that's fine. Uh, yeah, so the backside's trample, ward two, prowess, prowess. That's pretty sweet. Oh, uh, yeah, double prowess. But the, you know, what Balmore does for you is pumps all your guys and gives them trample. <laughs> okay, so it's basically like mentor, but for the crew. Right. And trample. <laughs> yes. So does Patrick 
put the, uh, the twister in the board and just say, hey, I picked it and I'm not doing anything with it? Or does he just say, hey, I'm going to try to refill my uh, my hand, right? With the uh, way the deck was built, we're, we've got to play to like the mid to late because we missed out a lot on a lot of the cheap like damage and draw spells. Mm -hmm. So I think we have to play it as a value card in the main. Okay. Chain World think... isn't... Go ahead. Good? No, go ahead. No, no, go... Okay, uh, so like, if I'm building, if I'm Patrick and I'm building the list, I think <laughs> I get down to like 41 to 43 cards and the Twister is in that last group. Right. That makes sense. Chain World's good. I don't know if it's great for this list, but I, 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 I would put it in the board, right? It can come in against some of these things and do work. Um, yep. Card... I hated that card so much back when in standard. <laughs> yeah, but it's kind of like I don't I understand why the the colloquialism of scamming people moved from Hearthstone to modern with the grief thing. But right. people were casting that spell that gave Chain Whirler death touch. Oh yeah. Years before. Yeah. Which is also kinda of like a scam, like, oh, it's just gonna deal one damage to the crew. Oh, now that one damage is attached to death touch. Ugh. Yeah, no, it, it's, yeah, there's definitely always been a scam of some type, right? Like, that's the, <laughs> there's always been a scam. Oh, my God. I was reading a thing the other day uh, while, while Swifty's tanking here. It was, like, big brain plays. I saw this Twitter feed. This guy said he was being attacked for, like, by an 8-8, and it was going to be lethal. So he cast uh, Tainted Strike on the 8-8 to take 9 Infect because... He said, because he was going to win next turn and being yep. at one, being, you know, at nine infect is just like being at one life. It doesn't matter. And yeah, I was yeah. just like, I was like, I never would have thought of that. That's why I'm a mediocre magic player. That's some big brain shit. Uh, Swifty with Helm of Obedience. He wasn't sure if he was going to lean into the combo or not, but here we are. He's just going to take the easy up two card Monty. Again, um, I, in the card board, it make, like, you, just, you put it in the board and you can just bring it in and win, or you can bring it in main after. It makes perfect oh. sense. His, yeah, exactly, but his concern was he didn't have enough tutors to either right. find Karn or the Helm. Right, so but, he's gonna but that's why it's it's so minimal of a cost in your board since you're running Karn main no matter what. Um, yep. That uh, I like the Zorn Orb there. I definitely like yeah, that you, one. Yeah, you have Fast Bond and you have the Ram Rhyme Up Excavator. Yeah. So the worst that happens is that somebody pulls Crucible out from underneath you on the wheel back, and then you're kind of out of it. But at this point in time, yeah, I think we're, we are we are taking no draw sevens as Josh and I. Cruci Crucible's gone. Crucible went to Patrick in 41. Did it? Yeah. Am I just silly? Yeah. Oh, yep. Yeah, yeah, I missed it. Okay. Yeah. So maybe we do have room for, like, two draw sevens because I still don't know if I'm Josh how I'm actually going to. I don't think he's going to have them, and I think it's a mistake. But I, I think, you know, I don't think he's going to have. I think that's where he's going to end up is he's not going to have enough draw. He's going to have this stuff, but he's not going to be able to deal with people's threats or be able to consistently have his hand full enough. He's got the gush, which is great, um, but he's either going to end up short of cards in hand or he's going to end up not being able to deal with people's threats. And I think that's yeah. where this list is going to end up. It's going to... When this list plays, like, a prime time would be really good in this list, right? Um, yeah. When this list goes boom, 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 it's going to be amazing, and he's going to get ridiculous turn three crushes. Yeah. Um, but then a lot of times he's just going to be like, I'm getting ready to do things, getting set up, and then I just fall short. Exactly. I think there's a lot of, like... What, I'm going to say this, and I don't want people to think of it negatively. There's a lot of Vintage Cube uh, smell on this, and that just means that, like, you can see very clearly smell effectively where the vrd no sorry the vintage cube influence is when you look at josh's deck where there are a couple of packages that can work well together right but you're missing the glue to to hold them together there's no uh no signets very little fast mono and a little to no velocity in terms of card draw which is like tantamount to bringing or playing either one of these lists independently. Yeah, a signal would be really good for Josh. Uh, there's the Palace Jailer. Uh, glad to see it, right? That card is just so, so good. It's interesting because very rarely does the Jailer and the Skyclave end up in different worlds. <laughs> but this draft has yep. been so... Oh, Alex with the wheel. Oh, man. Okay. This, so we're just like jumping in on some of these top missing cards and saying, uh, all right, we're going to party this way. 
Alex didn't want to take the Dryad, and I guess that's fine because you're still really a two-color deck. You're just splashing for Comet yeah, and, and Angel's Grace. So. And he may not even really realize, you know, I don't know how much he's up on it. Maybe he just missed it to the, the Druids exist, right? I mean, it's... Yeah, maybe. I think that's okay, too. It, I think the card's good, but not great in the format. Yeah. Ah, Dan took the Boomerang, but not the Isochron Scepter. No. <laughs> Oh, he's got his vowels reversed. Cozy. All right, so Kaderberg likes Dan's list. It's a very uh, Kaderberg list. Ooh, Kozilek's return. Another yeah, sweet hey, return. Yeah. Why not? No, it's It's going to deal with a lot of what's going on on this. Yeah. Uh, in this draft. Uh, a lot of Alex's list is susceptible to a K return. A Swift. fair chunk of Kevin's list. Swifties. Swifties. Bitter Blossoms and Lingering Souls yeah. and... Even as a board option, it's going to be really good. I think Alex's wheel is definitely going to be out of the board. I don't think there's any reason to play this thing main. Uh, what is Maybe we'll, we will get Dryad from Alex. Yeah, it's possible. If not, I think it's fine. Like I said, you're primarily a Gruel deck, so half your spells, in theory, aren't going to trigger it to grow. Right. I still want to see the Yavimaya, though, from Alex. I think that is one of the last pieces of the puzzle. It allows you to cut back on your green sources a smidge. The same thing with Dryad Arbor. Like I said before, I think those are the two missing cards from his list. You have the GSC, you got to lean in. But then there's an amount of, like, what else are we doing with this natural order still? So I... Oh, no, sorry. What am I looking up here? Um, I want to see... One more initiative creature out of Swifty. Tsunami. Okay. Interesting. I want to see Passageway Seer probably out of Swifty. You got to bring that one up. I've got no idea which one that is. It's the se it's the uncommon black one. The I black one. Okay. That's better than the rare. So it's a 2 2 yep. lifelink. Um, at the beginning of your end step, if you have the initiative, you it gets bigger. Yeah. That becomes a pretty pretty decent threat over time, even at a 4 4. Yeah. That's good enough. Yeah. I'd like to see another initiative card out of Swifty here. I think Matt has to absolutely take uh, Flash. Flash for Matt? You have Atroxa. You have Thoracle. I don't know. His deck's already play. going two distinct ways. I don't know. It's interesting. But you can, like, if you take if you take Flash, you get you get those two. You can take World Spine Worm with your last pick, and now you have Wait, one more or two. Good old Fractured Identity card is good. Mm-hmm. Like, Flash is just another way to get Thoracle on the board okay. at instant speed, at a hand. It, it, you have, like I said, you have Atroxa already, so you trigger that ETB. You can right. play World Spine Worm, and you can play, like, a, a, a more interesting and, like, weirder version of historical combo this way you've already given up on some equity on additional creatures to utilize with flash mm -hmm. um what fall primus for instance which has the etb and the leaves trigger yeah or is it just the leaves trigger right whatever it is so you missed up some equity there but if you really want to play a reanimation strategy I think you have to account for the fact that people are going to be playing things like Graft Digger's Cage and Surgical Extraction, and Flash allows you to play in a completely different way than just the reanimation strategy. Okay, yeah. That's it. Like I said, it's not at its best here because we've already given up equity on a number of cards that you should be playing with it, but I, I think right. it should be a consideration here. Or Show and Tell. I think that would also be fine in the spot, too, and might be better than Flash. Yeah, there's not another list, especially this late. There's not another list that's really going to capitalize on the show and tell. Like one of the problems with the show and tell is often you pick it early, and then so people hit pick really good board targets mm -hmm. um, to bring in, so they're capitalized on the show and tell. So like if he took show and tell with the last pick, there's only three people that are picking after him. Um, so that would actually be pretty hot uh, because yeah. it's just like okay, cool, like. Uh, you know, Alex maybe is going to show and tell something in good, like, but, you know, okay, you show and tell a crater to a fin. It's not your turn. You lost out on that. that uh, so whatever, right? Uh, yep. You know, you can show and tell, like, Andrew has some good, decent stuff to show and tell in, but who's show and tell in what, right? Like, that's the... Exactly. <laughs> well, like, nobody is bringing anything better to class right. than you outside no. of that Blightsteel Colossus. Right, for sure. 
So like a late show and tell, uh, like a last pick show and tell is hilarious because it's like, okay, yeah, y'all didn't, yeah. y'all didn't put those tide spout tyrants in your board for this. Where is your containment priest now? Like, or leyline binding or O ring, any of that stuff that can just you know ETB trigger, get your thing right. Yeah. So for Josh, I think Cauldra Complete should be his last pick. That thing's been floated all the way down the last pick. Yeah, it's got like let's let's control F and C. That I didn't miss it, right? Um, I don't think we missed it. We did not. I, so he's got the mana to be able to do it. Now, and maybe not. Maybe he doesn't. I mean, he's got possibly the mana to be able to get it out um, with the birds and the academy. Uh, he's got the tinker for it because other than the bite stone, yeah. he doesn't have a huge tinker. So I think Cauldra would be a really good last pick here. Um, it gives him another like really good threat that he can tinker out or that he can just cast, right? Yep. Yeah, I don't want to say that Lodestone is a tinker target, but that is like literally the next best thing you could be casting tinker for. Right. Oh, Worm Coil, I'm sorry. Yeah, he's got Worm Coil, which is good. You can tink tinkering out of Worm Coil is also a very good opportunity. Oh, yeah, yeah. Savine's Reclamation, so that's going to allow you to buy back your one fetch land as well as <laughs> some of your... Your little creatures. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, this means it's good. Urza Lord Protector. But without the... Uh, he doesn't have no, no Mike shenanigans. Stone, Stone? Yeah, just, just straight right, up let's... Urza Lord. No flipping it. Man, I maintain that nobody in the history of this game outside of, like, SOI uh, Limited has ever melded anything successfully. Uh, we've seen El Urza Lord Protected melded uh, in what, at a VRD. Did they, did they win on the spot? Because I feel like if you put yourself in that spot as the opponent... They uh, they won... I built it once in a, in a modern, in an MRD, and I won that game. Um, he built it twice in uh, on stream, and I think he won one and did not win the other. Ugh. Andrew with the moat, man. Swifty coming in with that. I mean, what do you... Your Bitter Blossom tokens are just gonna get over that, and I think that's it. What? Kevin. Kevin's just like, you know, doing this to make Mark print it, I guess. I don't know. Like Kevin just wants to waste ink. <laughs> Unless he thought it's a spite pick against Josh to store all that mana after an upheaval, but it's only colorless. Yeah, it's not. It's not. I don't know. Kevin's just being silly there, I'm pretty sure. I hope so. I would hope so. Come on. Come on. Give me some love here. Give me some love. Okay, so Swifty has no other... Okay. Has no way to win under his own moat aside from bitter blossom tokens and a johnny i think uh johnny i mean yeah is that correct yeah yeah you gotta is it do you gotta do the dance you gotta go plus minus plus minus plus minus with a johnny yeah you would have to plus minus after a while right like okay or i just, haven't played with a johnny vengeance in so long i honestly don't remember or just blow up other lands just plus 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 oh plus. getting yeah yeah getting you know so, yeah so the plus is Something doesn't untap. The minus right. is it doesn't, the helix. It doesn't tap them down. Correct. But it doesn't untap. Yeah. Yes. Um, it says if it, whatever it is does not untap, lingering then you lightning helix. He's got lingering souls tokens. Oh, okay. Yep, yep, yep. Thought scour, sure. Tainted indulgence. I like tainted. It's a good pick. All right. No show until let him at. How sad. Yeah. Tainted's interesting. I think we're just going to see transition. Hey, there's the there. Avamaya. And there's the Av. Uh, all right. All right. Bobble's fine. Oh, so uh, it is Krufik's God of Horizons is Kevin's girlfriend's favorite card. So, oh, is that the, oh my God. Bobble, like that is, is that our only Bobble? That is the only Bobble, I believe. So Urza's Bobble normally goes 21. Mishra's bobble normally goes 22. <laughs> oh my god. Normally they go quickly hand in hand together, and this is our oh, normal Ad bobble. Adam was fine floating both of those because Adam yeah. was the only one really doing artifact things this yeah, time. This is yeah. one of those rare drafts where, like, an eighth seed artifact player could have done really well, even with Adam in the draft, because it, you could have been aggro on one side yeah. and, like, combo down here. Well, it's interesting because, uh, Matt has some anti-artifact sideboard cards, and Andrew has some anti-artifact sideboard cards, but no one else really picked up the anti-artifact sideboard card. So, like, Adam could easily... Bro, run Dan has um, Brotherhood's End. I mean, there's a couple, yeah, Brotherhood's End. Yeah. So, but, like, outside of that, like, that, 
for a very solid looking artifact deck, there seems like there would be, there's some target anti artifact. Like Alex has some targeted ones. Yes. But like the big like the big ones, right? Like the melt now and the stuff like that. Oh, and Al, yeah. no, I lied. Never mind. Dan also has um, Mill Rod. So and there's a uh, uh, never mind. I lied. I'll shut up. Uh, all right, folks. Uh, so real quick, we're gonna do one quick interview. Who do you want to see? I would like to bring in one of the people on the ends, either Dan or Patrick. You know, are effectively our dedicated blue drafters. All right, let's, let's let's bring in Dan. All right, I'll let you talk to Dan, and I'm gonna go bathroom. Uh, so I'll be right back. I'm gonna send in Dan for a, we'll do a quick interview. Make this one about uh, four or five minute stops, and yeah. that way we can go on here. So all right, Dan. There you go. Pop oh, in here. we got Patrick Pop instead. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, okay, here we got. Pete just going to talk to you. Sure. About five minutes, then we're going to get to deck building. So. I'm sure everybody has questions. Hello. Hello. So, how did you feel your draft went? Uh, pretty good. I I don't know. Honestly, I mean, you look at the other decks and you're just terrified no matter what. But I just mm -hmm. like having a lot of spells that'll at least interact with my opponents. So okay. hopefully I'll have enough to, to deal with what comes my way and a little bit of board presence in the creatures that I've got that synergize well enough with those control pieces to just kind of amass a wide board and hope that they can't take care of everything. Okay. Uh, so one of the questions that I had was in um, Poppet Stitcher. Yes. Uh, right. Go ahead. Um, so do you plan to flip that with Mentor on board? It depends on my board state, but it's also mm -hmm. there in case maybe I get stuck with third path iconoclast or just those three, those two two uh, creatures, or if my if my mentor gets killed. Obviously, okay. the, the prowess, especially when you're looking at like if I have the Kenra spell spear out too, that's just way too good uh, to oh, for sure. to flip the prop pop it. But yeah, no, I, I I think it's just there as another thing that says you know my opt makes another two two and my, and if I'm if I'm at the point where it's just I'm wide on board and I might as well flip it, we'll flip it. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. That's mm -hmm. kind of, that, that's what we thought, because um, the only card that really interacted negatively with that was Monastery Mentor. Yeah. Um, Which truly Miller, is the heart of my deck. Monastery Mentor is one of my favorite cards, and it's what I really wanted to build around today. Once, once, you, once you picked Mentor and we saw the way the deck kind of took shape after that, but that's what I figured you were leaning into. There are some things that look like weird value rubs, like Thalia, Garden of Thraben, taxing your own spells, so mm -hmm. that seems like... It, an in or out kind of thing, um, depending on matchup, maybe. Same thing with Tishana's Tidebinder. Um, for, for a hot minute, I was giving consideration to dipping into a Hate Bears shell um, okay. with, with a lot of, like, kind of death and taxes, little creatures, and I was thinking about dipping into, like, those little white reanimation spells, like Patch Up and stuff that keep bringing them yep. back, but... The blue ended up being a little more there than I expected it to be, and because I okay. already had Time Twister, I decided to kind of pivot away from that again. And kind of that's when I, I was like, you know, maybe I can dip into red just enough. If I get Lorien revealed and the Triome at the same time, I would feel pretty comfortable getting a couple single red pip cards. And that's when I felt yep. awesome about grabbing uh, Third Path Iconoclast, which really sealed it into that that instant and sorcery way to go. Got it. The, the of all the lands, the only one that I questioned was the utility on Sacred Foundry, because generally speaking, when you're building a Jeskai deck, like I said on stream, the worst lands to put in there are the Boros lands, but at that point in time, you are out of fetchable yeah. blue-white lands that didn't ETB tapped. Yeah, honestly, right? I, I just wanted to have a red-white option off of my fetch land in case yep. I needed it, and I was shocked to see the shock land was still open, so I was like, ah, well, we'll just grab that, even though, as you say, it's not ideal. But um, I, I wasn't too worried about fixing also because I'm, I'm leaning pretty heavily with a lot of card selection at the very least. So yeah. I, I, I feel like I should be able to get there with what little I've got. And I, like I say, the key was getting the Triome uh, with the fetch and the land cycler is really nice. So I, I feel pretty comfortable with that. Oh, yeah, you had the Hallowed Fountain as well. So it all just yeah. kind of slots together. So it just seemed like at that point in time, it was just literally how do I cast my red spells the best? And Absolutely. because there's no other fetchable untapped blue-white or blue-red source. It is what it is. Yeah, I just so. wanted it there in case you know you get that opening t hand with a with a Kenra spell spear, and you're like, well, I really want that red early, so I just gotta have it. Yeah. Yep. And it also kind of locks up the fact that if you open on that and Lorien revealed, that's it. That's all three, or yeah. or vice versa, right? It's it's everything. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, and then I, 
yeah, then, yeah, I, then I'm feeling great. <laughs> yeah. Um, one of the, th the things we talked about was the twister and towards the end of the draft, whether or not it was going to be a value twister or if it would be a sideboard twister. I'm keeping it in the deck mostly because I still have a lot of stuff that's going to go to the graveyard. I got a couple of can trips. Uh, Opt and yeah. Ponder are always good. Uh, I'm going to be definitely throwing away spells here and there. So I, mm -hmm. I think the graveyard is going to get full. I think it's going to be able to help me really continue into the long game if I delay an opposing opponent and then they kind of put me on the back foot and I need something to just reload at the end, which is also a, a great use of Lorien Revealed, right? Because then you can just, hey, five mana if I'm out of cards and I don't need the land. There we go. Yeah, that's basically kind of where we came up with it when I was talking about this. I said, if I was going to be sitting down and building your list at the time we were talking about it, I might have 43 cards and like Time Twister would be in that last batch. But my understanding is of where it would play is exactly how you described it. It would be to kind of bridge you yeah. into the longer game. And then the the last question I have, because I see Steven lurking in the background, is uh, Luris. No Luris. Yeah, I, to be honest, that was one of those picks that I didn't really think of, and my throwaway Urza Lord Protector probably should have been a Luris. It probably should have been a, a dozen different cards, but to, truth be told, I, I, I'm, I play a little too much. I mostly play limited in EDH, so my brain doesn't always think about hybrid mana cards, so that okay. could have just been my mistake on, on the onset, because that is That's a, legit a powerhouse that. for that, my card, and I should have done that. That's actually a legit comment for future commentary. That, yeah. You know, uh, we talk about the struggles sometimes of cube players coming into VRD, but the struggles of commander players going to VRD is they might forget about the hybrid cards more. Well, and, and yep. like limited is where I get all my drafting uh, skill, if you will. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like EDH is kind of where a lot of my card knowledge comes from. So that's as a result, it's just kind of like, well, you know, I didn't think about it. So oh, that makes sense. You, you and a number right, of other people had the opportunity to take Luris. So you can so. start your build. And... Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you guys. I hope I do well. All right. Yeah, good no luck, problem. Brother. You do as well. All right, so that was Patrick on his basically Orzov, or not sorry, Orzov, Azar deck splashing Jess guy. Yeah. Or red for Jess guy. All right. All right. So what is the schedule of events, Mr. Hagen? So we have, uh, they're building right now, and you'll be able to, if you're following along on the sheet at home, you can look at builds as they come in on the sheet. Uh, but other than that, we are uh, we'll be putting up announcements through uh, Facebook and Twitter uh, today, uh, and on the St. Louis Discord. If someone let's let's bang out the Discord there again. Uh, I think Should just be that? yep. There we go. There it is. Um, so you can follow along, and we'll be throwing up announcements on there. And then within uh, the next day or two, we will be getting up. Uh, Mark's pretty good at getting them over. Uh, all these will be up and available on YouTube if you want to watch matches. And uh, we're good, Mark. We're going to wrap this thing up right here. So, all right, uh, predictions. What are your thoughts? Who is who walks away? Who's fighting for one and two? Let's go that route. Let's not say who wins. Let's say who's fighting in the for the one two spot at the end of the day. Uh, just from the way the decks looks, for me, it's going to be uh, Alex and Swifty. I think those two are going to be fighting for one and two. Okay. How about I, for you? I'm going with Adam and Swifty. Um, I think, uh, you know, looking at play skill, uh, you know, mixers of, of skill, uh, play skill, in-game, the decks, uh, I think Adam's deck's good, and I think it will carry enough through with, with there's, you know, hates there, but not an insane amount of it. Uh, yeah. And I think Dan uh, will be nipping at their heels and could easily slide into those those spots. So my pop four, I predict uh, Swifty, Adam, Alex, and Dan. Uh, I think Matt's deck could easily be, but uh, I think right now it's kind of doing two things, and I'm not sure where that's going to pan out at. So Yep, that all makes sense to me. All right. Well, this has been our draft for St. Lotus 13. I am Stephen Hagen, and this is Peter Kritzberger from at MTG Cabalcast. Tune into Cabalcast for all of your uh, how to invest in magic card needs. They are very good at what they do. And we are thankful for you for tuning in on us on this December 2nd. Uh, and we are going to uh, take a little break here as people build their decks and then come together, come together and record some matches. 